Hello everybody! Welcome back to Twofold! It's Twofold Tuesday. I don't know why. The music feels louder to me today than it usually does. I don't know if it actually is or if it's just me. It's very possible it's just me. Uh, anyway, hello everybody! Uh, happy Twofold Tuesday. I was about to say good morning. It's 2pm. <laughs> it feels like a morning for me because I have not woken up yet. But uh, welcome in! Welcome in everybody. I hope everybody has had a, a great start to the week so far. And if you haven't, I hope it gets better. <laughs> welcome Maya, welcome Rika. Congratulations on the first Rika. Managed to grab another one. Uh, hello Suzume, welcome. Welcome Akire, welcome Mumsev. Thank you for the work, Lurk. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I apologize in advance if I'm a little sleepy to begin with. I've um, I, I overslept. I overslept today, and then when I finally did wake up, Tiffany decided to settle on my bed right next to me, and so I just, I couldn't move then. So I couldn't actually get up. Because <laughs> I was having cat snuggles, so I, not only did I wake up late, I also got up even later. Because of Tiffany. I, I shouldn't be blaming Tiffany, this is my fault. It's my fault. I could have moved at any time. I just didn't want to. 
But I'm so excited to play some more Twofold today. I'm really excited to start the Caprice route. And I have the, the Mango Ultra Fiesta. We've got the, the blue, blue, bluish, it's like teal, I guess. The more blue can of monster. <laughs> For the blue character. I overslept as well. Oh, you too? <laughs> oh, the pain of oversleeping. I feel like it's, it's always a bit of a double-edged sword because it's so nice to get a bit of extra sleep. But then it throws the whole day off schedule and it's like, oh, oh no, what, what am I doing? Who am I? What, what day is it? What year is it? <laughs> but I'm very excited to play this today. And also, um, I did not have much for lunch because of waking up late. So I may have to grab a, a brioche roll at some point to, to tide myself over until dinner time. <laughs> but I think it'll be okay. Wait, Sisame, you too. You also overslept, forgot to set your alarms, woke up woke up at the time you were supposed to leave. Oh no. Oh, that's the worst feeling. At least you didn't wake up six hours later. Later than that. That would be worse. But oh, I guess it's an oversleeping day. Oh no. <laughs> the vibe for today is we eat you. And Mogo, hello! Welcome, welcome. Lovely to see you. How's it going? Oh, thank you for the hydrate as well. Akira, let's open my monster. Yeah. My second can of Fiesta from the... From the, the, the set of... Uh, 12? 12. From the set of 12 that Barb got me. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the ones which Lyra sent, which hopefully should arrive soon as well. So I'm going to be so stocked up on Monster. Also, Mooket, thank you so much for the subscribe for 14 months. Oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the Prime. Thank you. You only get one of those, so I feel very honored that you've given it to me. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. I hope things are going well. Yeah, like other than other than oversleeping and being really sleepy, I'm I'm generally doing okay at the moment. I'm really glad that the weather's cooled down, although it does feel kind of hilariously ironic that as soon as my air conditioning unit arrived, the temperature went back to normal. <laughs> But I'm so glad I have it for next time it'll be hot because last year it was, it, there was hot weather from like June all the way up until September. Like I remember the first week of September being unbearably hot because that was when I was doing my birthday stream. And I remember thinking like when I was doing my birthday stream last year, I was like, it shouldn't be this hot. It should not be this hot in the first week of September. It should not. <laughs> but I'm so happy I got my AC. Uh, it's cooler, but still a bit muggy down this end of the country. So you're still thinking AC is a good idea. I mean, honestly, I think like with, with climate change and stuff, I think AC is becoming more of a necessity now, which makes it even more painful that it's so difficult to get hold of in some places. <laughs> but I'm so happy to have mine. I'm, it's it's going to save me when the, when, when more hot weather comes. But uh, I haven't actually like fully set it up yet because I need to figure out a way I can set it up so that it's not blocked off and so that the vent actually reaches the window because I have silly windows like the way my window opens is that it opens with the exit like near a wall like I open my window hold on hold on I could do a diagram of this I think let me get my paint out. I want to do a little diagram. Where's my paint window? Are you here? Here it is. I don't know how much of this is actually showing. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Okay, here's my paint window. Let me try and like demonstrate my room to help people understand how I'm struggling. 
Hold on, there's a... Ah, uh, where is the... Shapes. Shapes, let me draw rectangles. There we go, okay. Okay, hold on. Let me move this. Yeah, like that. Okay, so... This is my bedroom. Oh no, a little smaller. This is my bedroom. If we say this is my bedroom, then, hold on. Then this is where my wardrobe is. This is where my L-shaped desk is. This is where my bed is. With the tiniest little gap there, I kind of just use my desk to put things on. Uh, this is where my bookshelves are. <laughs> I have quite a small room. <laughs> and then give it, give me a line. And then this is where my door is. My door, like out into the rest of the house, is like up this way. I didn't mean to do that. What am I doing? Like, this is my, my main door. Uh, I, you can't actually open my door fully because the wardrobe is in the way. But it's fine because there's enough room for a person to get through, like, here. Like, I just bring the door all the way back to here. Like, it goes up to, like, here. <laughs> and then you can get in when you smoosh past the bookshelves. So this is the, the basic layout of my room, right? And... And then this is where my window is. Along this wall, like all the way along like here, this is where my window is. But it's a really weird window and... Hold on, where are the square? Where are my squares again? Um, basically, there's a really big long window here. And then a smaller window here. And basically, the way it works is this big long window, this does not open. This is purely glass to let light in. This is a non-functioning window. This does not open. This is the window that opens. And it opens in this direction. Out of the house. With the opening here. <laughs> So basically, with my aircon, like, the first thing I was thinking was, oh, it would be so handy to have it here. Because then I'll be able to, like, put it there, end of my bed, between my bookshelves, enough space to, like, have air ventilating around it. Uh, not a problem. That'd be great, right? Um, then I realized, if I do, then the hose is gonna have to come all the way, like, around this way in order to get out of the window because of the direction it opens. <laughs> Unless I get a different type of seal that just covers the entire window. Which I may, I may have to. Which I- that's- that's what I'm thinking at the moment, because I was looking into hose extensions, but then the manual for my AC said specifically, do not use other hoses or change length of hose. It may damage the the product, so I'm very reluctant to do that. <laughs> also, Ryan, hello, welcome, welcome. We're folding, all right. At the moment, I'm um, I'm folding under the pressure of figuring out how to get my AC working. <laughs> but welcome, I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. Welcome to the obligatory yapping before <laughs> two fold starts. But yeah, this is how my my room layout is. Let me label everything. In case anyone is ever curious as to what my room looks like, now you know. You now know what my room looks like. Or like the layout of it. Not not what it looks like so much. Here, this is what my room looks like. Door. Perfect. <laughs> My incredible diagram. 
my wonderful diagram. But uh, what I'm thinking at the moment is, like, if, if I want to use the AC so far, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to have it, like, here. Like, I'm going to have to move my chair, like, as far under my desk as I can, and then have my AC here, like, between my desk and my bed. But if I do that, my desk is not going to be accessible. <laughs> So it's like, there, there is an option at the moment, and the hose will reach if I do it this way. But that will mean whenever I have the AC on, I will need to not go anywhere near my desk. My, my desk will just be, like, off limits. <laughs> Which isn't, like, ideal, but if it's between that and dying in the heat death of the universe, I know which one I would take. I know which one I prefer. Also, Ryan, oh my goodness, you're graduating tomorrow. Congratulations. Oh, that's so good. I hope you feel so proud of yourself. Congratulations on graduating. I hope I hope it's a lovely graduation. <laughs> but, oh, you've used a diff few different hoses with different portable ACs and it was never a problem. Yeah, it's. I don't think it would be a huge problem if I got a like a hose extension. I'm just scared because the manual specifically told me not to. <laughs> and I would rather not risk anything because it was quite expensive to get this portable AC unit and I don't want anything to happen to it. <laughs> but uh, I think I can work it out. I, I can definitely find ways of making it work. Plus it's really nice because it also just functions as a fan as well when it's not like in AC mode. So what I can do is I can just like I've got how to rotate things. Pretend I'm rotating this. I can rotate it so that it's like pointing at my bed and just blowing fan at me. Blow blowing fan air at me. Cool air. So it's very nice. It's nice having it. But yeah, there is my, my beautiful diagram in my, my room. <laughs> now you know what my room looks layout looks like. It'd be interesting if anyone can like piece together the photos of my room I've taken and the diagram I've just made and figure out what it like fully looks like. I think that'd be cool. Anyway, that's enough pain. I just I just wanted to demonstrate the pain I have with the way my window opens and then the opening is like towards a wall. <laughs> they're honestly they're awful windows. I wish we had like slidey windows. I want a slide window that I can just slide a little bit. But these ones are just like, nope, you've just got to swing it open. If you only want it open a little bit, then you're still swinging it open a little bit. It's not, it's not the best. Ah, uh, Suzume, you're having eggs and toasted bagel slices at work. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you managed to have something to eat before work starts, at least, even after oversleeping. Yeah, oh, probably because they don't want you using a longer hose, then moaning it doesn't work. Yeah, it, it would definitely be less efficient, I think, if the if it has to use a longer hose, because, like, the venting isn't going to be as efficient by extending that. And I, I understand that. It makes sense. It makes sense why they'd put that. But I'm, I always have that, like, little worry that I'll do something that it says not to do in the manual, and then everything will break. And because I broke the rules, I won't be able to do anything about it. It's like, it's really irrational for a thing like getting a longer hose or a hose extension. But I'm, I'm still just, I don't know. I'd always rather err on the side of caution. <laughs> also, Surface Tenshi, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. I say like five minutes late because I'm talking about my room layout. Hi. It's okay. That's that's all the the Microsoft Paint. I'm I've, I've closed the paint window. I'm closing the paint, and I'm gonna have another sip of my Monster because I I forgot how nice the Fiesta tastes. I forgot how lovely the the Monster Energy Ultra Fiesta is because I haven't had it for a couple of months now. I'll have to go back and check when I last had some of the Fiesta that wasn't uh, Sunday. But I haven't had this in a while, and I, I forgot just how lovely it is. I love it. <laughs> it's really nice. It's really fruity. 
yeah, I guess the... It's kind of interesting, because when you think of my favorite monster flavors, it's like, my I really like the Fiesta, which is mango fruity. I really like the Peachy Keen, which is peach fruity. And then I like the Ultra Zero and the Rosa, which don't... I, I feel like they don't have, like, a specific flavor to them. They have their own, like, unique flavors, but they are very sweet. <laughs> so my, my favorite flavors are sweet and fruity. Just like me. I love it. <laughs> Yes, where was I before I started sharing my AC woes? Oh, hold on, my controller's still plugged in. Let me unplug that a second. Oops, sorry, hold on. Do you ever just put something on a desk and then it immediately falls off? Yeah, me neither. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited for more Two Fold Tuesday. I'm. Uh, we we finished Millie's route last week. I I cried multiple times, and we also befriended Tanya, and we befriended Darren through the through the like the general route itself. So our next task is to befriend Heather. So we're going to start the stream in the nicest possible way with the nicest possible character. And I am very looking forward to that. I'm so curious about it. I really want to know what Heather's deal is. Like, it feels a little bad because from like the credit sequence, I feel like it's... It's clear she likes writing. I'm pretty sure she likes writing. She wouldn't be in the club if she didn't like writing. It's just her deal with the club itself. Like, honestly, one of my favorite moments of the credit sequence was seeing uh, Darren and Heather talking so animatedly together, like having a, having a great time. Like, like, why was that dynamic not there with the others around? Like, was it because of Tanya? Like, because of Tanya being so defensive? Is that why Heather then also bristled and got defensive? I don't know. Either way, we're going to figure out. We're going to figure out what her deal is, I hope. Because I, I know it's not as simple as she's just terrible. Because... <laughs> Because it's like every now and then there are these little glimpses. Like, I, I, I just want to know her deal. I want to know her deal. I'm so curious. <laughs> the weather's warming finally. What do you, what do you mean finally? <laughs> oh, the, whenever I see the word finally, I always see it as like a good thing. And for me, I'm, I'm like, I don't like heat. But I, I guess like, if it's been super cold for you, and you really like the heat, I'm really glad that the weather's getting warmer for you. I, I always find it so interesting when, when, when it's like hearing about different climates and different people in different climates. Like when people in Australia and places like that end up having cold weather and they don't know how to handle it because they're so used to warm weather. I'm always just sat here feeling so sad. Like, I wish we could swap. I wish I wish I could give you my heat and then I will take your cold because I can deal with that cold and you can deal with this heat. I wish we could just trade. <laughs> but no, it's been it's been really warm here for quite a quite a while. Yeah. Oh, that Oh, I miss that. I miss that. I miss that. I I need to go. <laughs> I need to go through my chat history for all my twofold streams now, and see how many times you've slipped the lyrics in, and I've just not noticed at all. I they're they're just gonna completely fly over my head. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Ah. Uh, oh, I'm a silly. I'm very silly. I haven't woken up yet. I'm gonna have some more monsters. <laughs> I also forgot to make my tea flask today. 
which I was planning on doing, and then I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Hold on, let me sit up straight. And bring my chair a bit closer. But yeah, I'm really excited to play more of this though. I'd it's it's always it's always the nicest experience when you go into a game knowing you will like it and you end up liking it more than you think you would. Like I feel like that's the nicest thing to me. Like it is so lovely going into something you don't think you'll like and liking it. But it's so much better when you go into something with high expectations and then not only does it meet those expectations, it smashes them. That is like the nicest thing. <laughs> okay, got that one. <laughs> Thank you for head pats. But I'm 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 really excited for more of this because it's I I I really like going into things without spoilers. I like going into things not knowing many details because I feel like discovering those details is part of what I really love it's one of my favorite things about like media in general and stories and games and like tv shows as well like if I get spoiled for something I will still watch it and I'll still enjoy it but I I won't enjoy it as much as if I hadn't been spoiled I'm very anti-spoiler it's also the reason why I don't play demos a lot of the time because it feels like I'm just spoiling myself for the actual game. <laughs> Which is, um... It is a little painful when there are so many amazing demos coming out. Uh, looks at Studio Elan, looks at A Tithe in Blood and Summer at the Edge of the Universe. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting patiently for the full games. <laughs> and you know I'm going to play them as soon as they're out. But I must wait. But I, I don't like demos because I don't like to like spoil myself, which is silly. But I'm silly, so it's fine. But yeah, I went into this with no idea of what to expect beyond the fact that Olive is failing and they have to choose between the two clubs. That was all I knew. And then, of course, I got to know the art club through playing First Snow, which was so lovely. And I'm really glad I did play that first as well. It gave me a, a really interesting perspective going into it after playing First Snow. Like, I feel like if I hadn't played that, I would have had like a slight different experience. Like, it definitely shaped my expectations of Caprice and what I knew about Caprice. And I think that was actually quite important for playing the game too. It, it changed my perspective in that, that last act. Like, because of playing First Snow and getting to know Caprice, I just, like, presumed she'd be okay. I was like, I know Caprice, she'll bounce back from this. She bounces back from everything. I fully presumed she would be okay. And she was not. And I, that was, I may not have had those assumptions if I hadn't played First Snow first. So it's really interesting to think about. Don't forget lock and key and love in a bottle. I'm so excited for those two as well. Uh, they they all look so good. They all look amazing. I'm I'm really here for older magical girls. I'm <laughs> me raising my hand as an older magical girl. Hey, I'm very excited. Uh, also, you heard that the twofold demo has a demo exclusive scene. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe if, if that is true, I may have to check it out at some point. I have no idea. Things to look into. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to, to play more of this now. I want to know Heather's deal. I'm excited to know Heather's deal. What's, what's the big deal, Heather? Why are you the way you are? Why are you like this? Let's find out. Bum, 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 bum. Let me rename this page to my heart. Let me rename this page to Owl. There we go. Okay, so here we go. We've we've got the prologue choices. We've got Millie Uwu. We've got Pain. We've got my heart. We've got Owl. 
And now for page six, this is gonna be where I save my Caprice one. So Caprice, she needs caps lock. There we go. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna start the Caprice saves. But for now, I think it is time to figure out what Heather's deal is. Hold on, let me change the UI too. Very, very important. We need the pink. There we go. <laughs> Look, I love that there's a pink UI option. It makes me so happy. But yes, we've approached Tanya. And we now know the story behind Tanya too. We know why she's so antagonistic against Caprice. It's because she's literally only heard about Caprice when Millie is ranting. So, of course, Tanya's built up this image in her mind that Caprice is a horrible person. <laughs> Because she only ever hears the bad stuff and not all the the amazing times. We reached out to Darren and he decided to... He, he built up his confidence. He decided to take the reins of the writing club, remake it. So now it's time to ask about Heather. Part of me doesn't want to bother, but... <laughs> right, cause what, did, what did these say? Yeah, this was... It's been a while. It'd be good to catch up. And Tanya is, couldn't hurt to get closer to Millie's friend. So yeah, ahead of time, look at the door open. <laughs> Part of me doesn't want to bother, but... Yeah, I'm so curious. It's Heather time. Heather continues to be an enigma. She plainly doesn't care for writing at all, and varies from ambivalence to outright hostility towards the club members. Why is she still a member at all? I don't understand. I just realized. I didn't put my glasses on. There we go. If I'm going to be reading, I need my glasses. <laughs> I remember the post-it note, but not my glasses this time. There's always going to be something. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, you've mostly been lurking, but still here for this? Oh, that is completely fine. Like, if lurk away. I feel like visual novel streams are a, a perfect kind of stream to lurk in. You can just get the story. You don't have to chat unless you really want to. You can just enjoy the, enjoy the environment. And I read. <laughs> also, Tim Mochi. Hello. Thank you for the head pat. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. Something just went really weird on my computer. Sorry, hold on a sec. What just happened? I just did this. It's not my stream deck breaking again, is it? Is my stream deck broken? No, okay, so, uh, stream deck's not broken. My whole computer did like a really weird flash for a second. Like, like well, not a flash. It was like something opening and then closing. And I don't know what it was, and I'm a little scared. I, I think my computer might just be haunted. It may just be haunted. That's okay. So long as the ghost lets me stream, I'm happy. I'm okay. <laughs> what is happen happening? Uh, G Gluten Morgan, you're ready for the day. <laughs> oh, I like those. I like those puns. Uh, oh god, I can't think of any bread puns. I'm trying to think of bread puns. My, my brain is empty. I, w I was not early to rise this morning. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Oh, Suzume, 90% of the time in Leary chat is lurking at work in the morning. The last 10% is lurking at home after raiding on a Sapphic Sunday. Yes, I love getting the Sapphic Sunday raids. I love it. It makes me smile so much. But uh, I, I appreciate it a lot too. Also, Kiroboros, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. You're here just in time. We're going after a really spiteful nasty person to figure out what her deal is i'm sure she's not that bad right deep down i'm i i feel like she's got a 
a soft center. If we can break past that that hard exterior, I think there's a gooey soft center inside. I think she'll be nice. Maybe. She may not be. <laughs> I may just be an optimist. <laughs> I may just be optimistic. I'm, I'm just mostly curious. I want to know what her deal is. I want to know why she keeps hanging around here. She so clearly hates it so much. It's so weird. Like here, yeah, why is she still a member at all? I don't understand. Oop, hello. Given how antagonistic she is in the club, maybe meeting her on more neutral ground sometime in the future would be for the best. Millie notices me catching her eyes as she and Tanya stop talking. Oh no, sounds fun. Oh, it's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm very, I've been looking forward to this. I've been really curious since the beginning what Heather's deal is and I'm very excited to find out more about her. <laughs> also, Ribbons, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome, come on in. Uh, you're just in time for me skipping through Millie's route to to talk to a girl who hates everyone. <laughs> How, we're starting with the comfiest times. Hey, Millie. Know where Heather might be? She thinks to herself for a moment, but it's Tanya who speaks first. She keeps her business to herself, but I've heard her slip about her media studies and journalism courses before. Ooh. Media studies and journalism. Does she want to be a journalist? Does she want to be, like, a journalist reporter? Like, that would make sense why she's in the writing club, if she wants to be that kind of, like, journalist. If, if she wants to be, like, a magazine writer or something. Ooh, we're learning. We're learning about Heather. That's something to go on, at least. Thanks. Don't know why anyone would give someone like her the time of day, though. Yeah, that's what I'd expect Tanya to say. Well, it's just... I've been around for a few weeks now, but I think I can count the number of times I've seen her around on one hand. Consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Tanya, please. Oh. It's nice that Millie stepped in there. Millie's protest seems to do the trick in silencing Tanya's complaints, even if the look on her face makes it obvious she has a lot more to say on the matter. Either way, I was just curious. Thanks for the heads up. There's quite a lot of food here. Okay, Why do you make so many- same, I think. Right, and now we skip until we get a Heather scene. Beep, beep, beep. God, I love the, the soundtrack to this game. I love the music in this game. Beep, beep, beep. Ooh, new scene? I think this may be a new scene. Heather scene. Let me test. Yep, we're not skipping Heather scene. Oh, okay. Okay, time to figure out what her deal is. It's not exactly how I expected to spend my free time, but at least the arts building is quiet enough to hear myself think. Darren is at least sort of reliable when it comes to attending club meetings and actually participating. Heather is more of an enigma. Why bother showing up when you so blatantly don't care for the place? Something has to be going on with her. Yeah, it, the, my thoughts exactly, Olive. My thoughts exactly. Indistinct sounds can be heard from up ahead. The door to the nondescript room closed and the lights off. Suspecting I found my target, I walk up and gingerly open the door. Ooh, she's got a little smile. She's got a little smile. She's not frowning. It's so interesting seeing Heather not frowning. <laughs> the sight inside shows I've hit the jackpot as I step inside, Heather's head silhouetted by the projector's flickering light. I stroll up behind her to see the screen better. She looks over her shoulder, barely acknowledging my presence before going back to watching the screen. 
looks like the movie's from the 80s or early 90s, going by the fashion and the, uh, video quality. Not much more than a B-grade slasher or horror movie, filmed on a cheap and unsteady camera. Interesting taste. <laughs> now she's frowning. If you're going to bother me anyway, sit down and watch. Aye, aye, Captain. At least she's not shooing me away. I settle into one of the uncomfortable chairs beside her and cast a glance beside me. She looks perfectly at home as she sits watching, cross-legged, blowing bubbles with her chewing gum. <gasps> Heather CD! <laughs> oh, she's so cool though, look at her. <laughs> she's so mean and awful, but she's so cool. I love her pen. This type of pen. I have bought so many of these types of pens over the year because I think they're cute and I like the way they look. I can't write with them. <laughs> I can't write with any kind of novelty pen. I, I try. I just put them in my pencil pot to look nice. I've never used a pen like this. <laughs> this doesn't... Oh, the music's so good. doesn't feel like an intended use of the media room's projector system, but I suppose it isn't hurting anything. Not really the kind of thing I'd expect you'd be into. Shh. I'm sorry. As the movie takes her attention, I follow her gaze. Yeah, this is going to be a media studies thing, isn't it? She's probably doing homework right now. <laughs> If you're not mistaken, I think this is the first friendship route we've seen with the CG. Yeah, I don't remember a, a Darren or a, a Tanya one. So this is really nice. <laughs> Although, like, I, I wish there was... I, I want more Darren art. I would love, like, a Darren CG. I feel like... I, I, I think I just have a soft spot for Darren, honestly, but... <laughs> As the movie takes her attention, I follow her gaze. You came just in time for the best part. Oh my goodness, a smile. I love seeing Heather like this. This is a different side of Heather. We've not seen this side of Heather. I like this. With the camera set ahead of her, a disheveled woman nervously steps through a wheat field in the heavy rain. A weak flashlight clutched tightly with both quivering hands barely piercing the night's darkness. With a sharp and ominous sound effect, a menacing shadowy figure rears up behind her, her face freezing. The woman spins around and shrieks loudly, and then... Ah, uh, yeah, if you recall correctly, Theo made this Heather CG, then realized she was the only club member with one, so had Tanya in one of the Millie ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I, 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 can we, can we like, can we crowdfund a, a patch for a, for a Darren CG? I would pay for that. I would, I would, I would fund that. What would the scene be though for Darren? What would be a good like CG moment for Darren? Maybe the moment of like handing the keys over. Oh, that could be so nice. Like a key handover. CG with with Millie handing the keys to him. Oh, that would be lovely. I'm going to imagine that in my mind. Anyway, the woman spins around and shrieks loudly, and then, ooh, <laughs> I love how everything goes red. You know exactly what's just happened. <laughs> Though obviously fake, the gore's enough to make me cringe a little. Heather just keeps on chewing her gum, entirely unmoved. You can tell someone was behind a movie like this. It isn't some committee of suits looking at statistics and focus groups. This is a director's vision, right there on the screen. Oh, she's passionate about movies, huh? Oh my goodness, I guess we've... Oh... This is so cool. We're getting another direction again of art. Like there's, there's the art of writing. There's the art of drawing with Caprice. 
There is the music art with Haley. There is cooking art with Olive. And there's movie movie art, film film media art with Heather. This is really cool. And then yeah, I, I guess then Darren is more the the journalistic approach in that kind of sense as well. And then I guess like also like the mechanics as well and figuring out how things work. Figuring out how machines work, figuring out how to fix an engine, like put parts together to make something new. That is also really creative. So we got that for Tanya. Like that's also a creative thing. Like if you've got a machine and you go, if I put a new part in here, it will make it better. That's creative. You're, you're thinking of like creative solutions to create something new that works better. <laughs> it really has everything. We got everything. I love this. I love this. I love these characters. I love this game. I love this game. Can we go through and I'm... I, I have so many things that I have to do. I have so much work on my plate. But I want to go through and like clip every time I've said I love this game while playing it. I also want to clip every time I've said I love lasers playing Talos 2. <laughs> But there's so much art, I love it. I, It really, it goes to show just how expansive art is and creativity. Like when you really think about it, so much stuff requires an element of creativity. It is so important in everything. I love it. All the different art forms, yeah, I love it. And Nugs, hello, welcome, welcome. More gainers, yes, always. Always, the power of uh, Two Fall Tuesdays. Yuri Tuesday. <laughs> welcome, welcome, I hope you're doing well. Heather is so passionate about this and I, I love it. Right down to the blood squibs. <laughs> what brings you around to this corner of the campus? You're in the habit of poking your head into any unlocked room you come across? Actually looking for you. Not at all. Which, well, more like, <laughs> more like I was uh, trying to find you. If Olive says that out loud, Heather is one hundred percent gonna call them a stalker. I'm calling it now. I feel like Heather's gonna be like, "Ew, what are you, a stalker?" <laughs> sure, one of the viewers can make a compilation of "I love this game." I I would love if people can. Like if. If anyone just like spots a moment where I'm just here going, I love this game, uh, please clip, please clip all of them. <laughs> oh, and Gambler, thank you for the luck as well. Welcome, welcome. And oh, Nugs, just finished making fried chicken wings and waiting for your mom to get home. Oh, enjoy the chicken wings. Oh, I, I kind of want chicken now. Fried chicken sounds really good right about now. I, I didn't have much for lunch. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight, to be honest. What, what, what do we even have? I'll figure it out afterwards. Uh, in marketing, you separate separate creatives and creative problem solvers due to there being motivation factors. But it's so great seeing them all in different ways in a storytelling game. Yeah, right. It's great. It's like, yeah, I fully agree. You can't just like lump everything under the umbrella of creative. But I love how creativity is so, so active and relevant in so many different aspects. I love it. <laughs> Fried chicken for dinner. Oh, what if I do though? What if I get takeout? I don't feel like I should get takeout. I just spend all my money on an AC unit. <laughs> it wouldn't be very responsible of me. It would be nice though. Oh, I do, I do want chicken now. We do have just, I do have chicken nuggets. I can have chicken nuggets. It's not the same as fried chicken, but <laughs> it'd do. Also, Autumn Tayan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. You have leftover Popeyes in the fridge, so you're making chicken rice. <gasps> that sounds lovely too. I do love rice. Honestly, I could do chicken nuggets and rice make my own like bargain katsu that isn't katsu at all 
Good times. Uh, Nugs, does it feel cooler now in my room? Uh, it does, but not because of the AC. I haven't fully set up the AC yet. There have been teething issues to try and figure out how to set it up properly. But I will set it up soon. But thankfully, the, the weather here has gotten cooler anyway. It, uh, it started getting cooler from, like, Friday onwards last week. So I don't need it at the moment. Otherwise, I definitely would have been figuring out how to set it up a lot more frantically. <laughs> but no, the weather's actually really mild at the moment, which is very nice. But yeah, uh, now you want to cook lemon honey chicken. Oh, I love lemon honey chicken. It's always my go-to order when I'm getting, like, Chinese takeout. I... I Lemon honey chicken is so lovely. Oh, Autumn, can't stay long because you have to run, but wanted to drop a follow because I seem really fun. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you decided to, to drop the follow and stick around. But uh, if you have to head off too, no, never feel like you have to stick around here. It's a very, very casual stream here. It's a drop in, drop out situation. <laughs> I, I'm never mad if anyone has to just like pops by for five minutes and then has to leave it just makes me happy that you want to come say hi in the first place it's nice but yeah glad glad you decided to follow thank you or oh, katsu curry yeah i'm it's weird i'm not actually the biggest fan of katsu curry i'm i'm really picky when it comes to curry and hold on which i'm trying to think the curry we usually have on a friday what we do is we usually have a korma. Chicken korma curry is the one we usually have. And that's my favorite type of curry. But I'm I'm really picky with curry. I'm I, I thought for the longest time that I didn't like curry because I'd only tried a couple of types of curry and I didn't like those. Because like the tastes were too like, I, I don't want to say spicy. It's like the tastes were too intense. There were tastes in there that I didn't like. So I just thought I didn't like curry in general. And then I tried numerous different curries. Like I tried, oh goodness, what did I even have? It was like a butter chicken curry with my friends. And I, I tried a bit of theirs and I was like, wait, this tastes incredible. Hold on, maybe I do like curry. And then I started joining in on the family curry nights. <laughs> and now it's a tradition every Friday. Oh, it's because I'm so cool, Timochi. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. I don't know how I've managed to trick people into thinking that. <laughs> oh, thank you for pouring dice on my head, too. But, oh, you're going to go order, too? I hope you have good food as well, Kiroboros. Right, what did you roll? Let's see what you roll. Let me roll the d20. Ba -ba -ba -ba. You got a 12. That's decent. That's that's past half. That's That's higher versus lower. Right, let me roll for myself. I want to see what I get. Oh, I got a 19. It's going to be a good day. <laughs> I got a 19. Yeah, you get that. Mixing too many tastes or having somebody too strong or undertones can ruin a dish. Yeah, it's, it's mostly just that I... I'm really sensitive to, to some flavors in particular. Like... I, I have, like, a very, very sensitive tongue. <laughs> I'm the kind of person where, like, if, if you put something in a dish that I don't like and then you pick it out afterwards, I can still taste that it was in there, even when it's something very mild. So I'm, I'm that kind of horrible person. Like, I've, I've actually had a situation once where I ordered in a restaurant uh, they gave me food with an ingredient I, I asked them not to include. I asked them if they could remake it without that food. They took it back, they brought it back. I took one taste and I could instantly tell they had just taken out that one ingredient. I could still taste it. And so I, I had to like flack them down again and I felt like the worst person in the world. <laughs> I felt so guilty doing it, but I was like, I can't eat this, I'm sorry. I can taste it. <laughs> I know you just picked it out. I know other people would be okay with that, but I'm weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> Credit to the staff, though. They were really lovely, and they did remake it without the ingredient, and I did give them a... Well, we all gave them a good tip. It was good. It was a good restaurant. It was really nice food. 
But I felt so bad for like flagging them down twice for the same meal. But yes, thank you for the the eight gym dude as well, Tim. But oh, Lyra, you say uh, think it. Don't think it matters what kind of curry you use as long as you put the the katsu on top. Yeah, the problem is I don't like the texture of katsu with curry. Like if I'm having curry, I I tend to have chicken curry and I need it to be like soft chicken without a coating for me to like fully enjoy it. I don't like like the mixture of that texture with that taste. If that makes sense. I'm I'm also a big uh, texture person. <laughs> I'm also really picky with textures. I'm just an incredible, incredibly... I don't want to say I'm a picky eater because I feel like that has such a negative connotation. Um, I'm... I'm a selective eater. <laughs> but uh, as, I've, as I've gotten older, I found way more foods that I do really enjoy. And it's very nice. Oh, that's fresh cilantro for you. Wait, cilantro is... Coriander? Yes. Cilantro, coriander. Do you have the the gene that makes it taste soapy? <laughs> because uh, I, I'm i pretty sure I don't have the gene that makes it taste soapy, but I, I still don't like the taste of uh, coriander, cilantro. But yeah, I'm, I'm very, very, I'm, I'm a selective eater, yes. <laughs> It makes me sound distinguished. Like, saying I'm a picky eater makes it just sound like I'm really unreasonable and awful. <laughs> but if I say I'm a selective eater, I can just be like, well, actually, actually, I'm into gourmet dining. I'm a selective eater. I only have the most refined foods, such as dinosaur nuggets and instant noodles. I'm, I'm sure you understand. <laughs> uh, try Thai fusion. I need to try that. I should try that at some point. I've not tried Thai fusion before. But yeah, I'm... I've discovered, honestly, mostly through my brother's cooking. Like, my brother really likes to cook. He's really good at cooking, which I really like, because I'm really bad at cooking and I don't enjoy it. Uh, he is really good at figuring out herbs and spices to make a meal taste even better. He's... He just experiments. He's the type to just be like, I wonder what this would taste like with a dash of this. He'll just put it in and it somehow always tastes great. <laughs> and he just somehow knows what works so well together. And I've discovered so many, so many spices I really like just from him experimenting. Uh, one thing I really like is we have this, um, which one is it? It's a, a Thai spice. I'm, I'm forgetting the number. I think it's five spice. Yeah, a, it's like a Thai five spices powder. And it's really, really nice. I, I love that. I, it's so good. I think it's like cinnamon, star anise, cloves. I don't remember what else is in it. I don't know what's in it, but it's like, so long as it's not too much, it always has to be just like a dash of it just to give it a, a little bit of extra flavor. But the, the Thai five spice is so nice. There's also a, a specific uh, seven spice that we get as well that also tastes lovely. And, oh, what else does he use? We have a full spice rack downstairs. We, we've got, we actually have two. We have two racks just full of herbs and spices. <laughs> and, uh, chili powder as well is used in a lot of things but like not enough to just not enough to make it like spicy spicy just to give it flavor the way olive did with the cooking it's the exact way olive did their cooking with millie just like i just add i, I add a tiny bit of chili just enough to give it flavor without millie noticing <laughs> that kind of thing But uh, yeah, it's all in the wording. As a marketer, you can confirm. Yes, it's it's very easy to 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 take something and make it sound better. Like if I say like uh, I'm not gonna give up on this thing because I'm stubborn, then that kind of sounds a bit like oh okay then. But if I go I am 
persistent and a problem solver. And I don't give up until the job's done. It immediately has a more positive slant. <laughs> But yeah, best way to cook, mess around and find out. It it really is. It's like people say that cooking cooking is an art, baking is a science. Baking is very much uh, if you experiment too much, you risk just ruining the whole recipe. But cooking is a lot more you can try things out. And I think that's why I don't like it. I'm I get scared. <laughs> I get scared when I have too much freedom and I'm like, well I, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, oh, Lyra, you hate the, the texture of the stalks. The stalks of what? Which stalks? Oh, the stalks of cilantro. Oh, I don't know what the texture's like. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm picky with texture too. Oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picky with textures as well. I'm, there are some vegetables where I can't eat them if they're cooked in a certain way. Because the texture just... No, thank you. Uh, Nugs, your older brother does experiment. Sometimes he chews an ingredient that terribly doesn't complement the other ingredients. It just makes it worse. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I can only think of one time when Xander's cooked something I didn't like. And it was, it was just a situation of uh, flavors being too strong for me. But uh, I think he also wasn't the biggest fan of it so I didn't feel bad for for saying I, I didn't really like it <laughs> also Loen Loen let me know if I pronounced that properly hello welcome welcome to the stream I was playing twofold uh we got a little bit distracted talking about food how did we start talking about food oh it was because Nugs said Nugs you said you were making uh <laughs> you, you you just got a fried chicken and then I I was talking about fried chicken. Yeah, we, we we went off on a little bit of a tangent. But it's okay. Let's get to know Heather a bit more. Let's see if she does call us a stalker. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. But yeah, honestly, I love the tangents. It's part of the fun of the visual novel streams for me is like every time I play a visual novel, I always end up going off on a conversational tangent. It's... They just, like, inspire conversation, I think. It's something will happen in the game and it'll make me mention something and then the conversation grows from there. It's really nice. And as I always say as well, my streams are meant to be comfy, cozy places. It is just a place to chill. We're just having a good time. I am not in any rush. If it takes me a year to finish this game, then I will keep playing it for a year. We are... There's no rush. There's no like fierce like I need to keep playing I need to keep playing and that's what I like <laughs> but I will keep playing because I want to know what Heather's deal is I want to learn more about her but yeah the, the year of two fold it's I really hope it doesn't take me a year because I want I want to experience so much more <laughs> but it's definitely going to be at least another month at least at least at least Twofold Tuesdays are going on for a, a little while. Anyway, back to Heather. You're doing such a stellar job pleading your case here, Apricot. Huh? Olive. <laughs> Close enough. She turns her attention back to the screen before I even get the word out. Guess I should have expected that. Yeah. That wasn't Heather forgetting their name. That was Heather not caring about their name. She picked, like, the the furthest away possibility on purpose to be like, I'm, I'm forgetting your name on purpose. I don't care about you. <laughs> well, what's your deal anyway? I could ask the same about you. What do you mean? Don't play dumb. Why is a well-adjusted, sensible person like you in some dead-end club like Millie's? Oh, now we're getting down to it. Now we're gonna find stuff out. Okay. Oh, because of... Oh, uh, Olive has they-them pronouns. <laughs> but they look like an upset elf. <laughs> Wait, yeah, it does kind of look like elf ears. That's so funny. 
just pretend their ears aren't actually there. It, 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 they do look like a, a sad elf. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, that's great. You make it sound like the writing club's on life support. I mean, it kind of is. Isn't it? Yeah. I give a half-hearted shrug. She's not wrong, but that's a far more blunt assessment than I expected. Oh, Sanyamita, hello! Welcome, welcome, thank you for the hydrate and posture check. Let me have a big stretch. Hold on, I'm gonna adjust my headphones too. They're, they're slipping slightly. The sound of me rustling around. <laughs> okay, there we go. Big stretch. Big stretch, sat up straight, got my headphones on comfortably, got my monster, let's have a sip. It's so nice having the fiesta again, I forgot how much I love this. I love how I went a while without having the ultra fiesta and I was like, actually I think the rosa and the peach are the ones at the top of my list. And then I have a can of this and I'm like, it's, it's back to a four way tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, three-way tie. Three-way tie. I think the Ultra Zero, the white can, uh, that's definitely the flavor that I care about the least amongst my four flavor favorite flavorites. <laughs> my four flavorites. Um, yeah, it's definitely the Rosa Fiesta Peachy Keen as my top three. Th those are my top three monster flavors. But I do still like the Ultra Zero as well. And it's, I feel like it's the most neutral one of the three. It's the only one of them that I can drink around Xander without him complaining about the sweet smell. <laughs> yeah, she fully thought about the fruit that's on the exact opposite side of the fruit spectrum as Olive and rolled with it. I love that so much. Honestly, it is a cute name though. Ah, oh, don't worry, I can take as long as I need. Don't have to finish it too soon, doesn't need to be today. Sometimes we need to step away and do other things. I like talking about food. And what else have I done in this that's been a, a fun tangent? Um, looking up what polynomials are and realizing it's algebra. Yes, things like that. Actually, no, we could probably do without the maths. <laughs> we could probably be fine without the maths, actually. I'd, I'd rather not talk about maths. I'm I'm very happy to not talk about that. But yeah, I, I love the tangents. It, it makes it a, a much nicer experience than just going through the game without talking about anything. I can't imagine that. For a game that invokes as much thought as this game has, I cannot imagine not talking about it. <laughs> it's so good. I could ask you the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it's really impressive and thoughtful writing. Shows the character's thoughtfulness to being abrasive to them. Yeah, that's, all of the writing in this has been so wonderful. Like, the, the characters more than anything, the character development, the depth all of these characters have is... I love it so much. And it's really nice because it's such a natural depth too. I feel like with characters, it's really easy to like fall into like tropes, to have stereotypes and be like, oh, well, this is the happy character. This is the serious character, like that kind of thing. And then there's nothing like, no levels to it. There's no depth underneath that. But all of the characters in this, it's like you get a first impression of them and then you realize there is so much more going on under the surface that they are, these are real people. These are like fully fleshed out people. And I think that's what makes it resonate so much. That's what makes the emotional moments hit so hard because it feels so real. It is so, so well crafted. I, I love it. I love this game. I did it again. I love this game. <laughs> Oh, math is great for someone else to do. Exactly. Exactly. That is my point entirely. Maths is really important and essential and other people can do it. 
But yeah, it's always so nice when when there's like such a such a well developed story, such well developed people. I I really really love it. Ah, uh, dating sims are especially guilty of having the one sided aspects. Yeah, it's really easy when you only have like one side of the story. But then seeing it from a different perspective, that's part of why this is so great. Like twofold. It's two sides of the same piece of paper. It's the same story, but we're experiencing it from different sides. The same things are happening, but it's different how people react to it. And like what one person does in a situation wouldn't be the same as what another one does. And that's, I, that's what makes it so special. That's what makes it so incredible. It's the two sides, twofold, the, the twofold, the two stories the same but so different i love it i love it anyway i got so distracted more heather heather <laughs> i have my reasons just as i'm sure you have yours okay perhaps our wonderful club leader has won you over uh, i feel like the voice lines for heather are getting cut off at the very beginning i'll have to mention that afterwards it's just they're just kicking in a split second too late She's teasing, and it's such a teasy line. There are about a dozen different ways you can could interpret that, though the smirk creeping onto Heather's face seems to imply the most embarrassing one. <laughs> two sisters' stories that were penned on two sides of the same paper. Olive pen. Thanks. Thank you for that. She's nice, but I'm just there because I need the help to pass my writing classes. Yeah. No wonder she acts like your mom. You're the perfect little student for her to fuss over. Hello. You really don't like Millie, do you? Heather sits there a while, chewing her gum. I shift a little in my hard seat. Just as I think she's tuned me out for her movie, she stops chewing and finally answers. Who do you think was the first person in the writing club? Of <laughs> those still around, anyway. It's not a terribly hard question. Millie would have joined as soon as she could, and she and I are in our last year. Millie, if I had to guess. That's what you think, right? It was actually me. Yeah, that's what that's what I figured as well. Like we we know Heather was in the club before. Like back when the club was just a hangout place for friends and then all her friends graduated. So that checks out. That makes sense. Aren't you a year behind her though? I wonder if she I wonder if she got held back a year. Or maybe she skipped a year. Maybe she had like a gap year. She might have just not had enough credits to continue to the next year and had to, like, take the year again. I took a gap year. Oh, no, yeah, gap year. Little did I know the club would implode the moment I left. Ha! Nice. It was a real club back then. I knew everyone there. Got on with them just fine. Not that I particularly liked writing, but oh. the people there made it worth it. Uh, and it evaporated by the time you came back? Oh yeah, if everyone graduated, uh... Just a shriveled husk. Went from a couple dozen people to three. Even that's being generous. Not all grease monkeys only there to keep the head count above water. <laughs> it's true, Tanya doesn't want to be there, but... Grease monkey. Heather, don't 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 say that. Don't don't call people names. I don't know why I'm saying this. She's gonna keep calling people names. There's a certain melancholic note to her last words, which is probably the closest to genuine open emotion I've seen from her. 
Not that I'd blame her, given how disheartening that'd be to come back to. Whether the blame for that could be laid entirely at Millie's feet, I'm not so sure about. Regardless, it's clear Heather's made up her mind. Oh, more blood. Silence lingers as her gaze goes back to the movie, the killer now hunting down another hapless teenager. I can't see the appeal of this stuff myself, and this isn't helping. I love that you can see, like, the red glint in her eyes as she's watching. You mentioned something about needing bodies for the club, back when Darren and I joined. That's the first I've heard about any rule like that. There's nothing official from the college admin about when a club gets shut down. What is a rule is that every club has to have a supervisor and an allocated budget. That makes sense. And if if there aren't enough members to make it worthwhile, they're not going to get allocated that, huh? And that's just what keeps a club going. And besides, the writing club doesn't even have a supervisor. I didn't see one in the art club either. The art club's nothing but a group of freaks <laughs> who somehow got a set of keys to hijack a room. Hey, I like those freaks. Stop that. As for the writing club, well, you ever see that old raisin of a man around campus? Eyebrows like a double as bird nests? Hard to miss if you know him. I see. He's one of my gen ed professors. <laughs> ah, the, the most supervising supervisor. I see. Opinions? I usually like my teachers just fine, but he should have retired years ago. For some reason, he couldn't, and now he takes it out on everyone around him. Oh, great. Got it in one. Never met a student who liked him. Not even a goody two-shoes like you. <laughs> hey. Unfortunately for him, he got saddled with being the supervisor of the writing club. Now, what do you think happens when a club with a whole three people has a supervisor who doesn't want the job? It, um... Yeah. Yeah, this situation makes a lot of sense. Uh, they dump it, I guess? If the member count is that big of an issue, how is it still around in that case? Wait, why do you know so much about club politics anyway? I remember checking up on clubs before, and none of this is written on the school site or brochures. Ah. Oh. I wonder if the, the Darren friendship is going to be Darren ends up taking over the creative writing club. I wonder if the Heather one's going to end up being Heather takes over the club. And then the Tanya one is where the, the club folds, but uh, it they, they'll figure out a way to bring it back, I'm sure. Same answer to both. I caught wind that the crotchety old fossil was going to get us shut down, so I persuaded him to leave it alone. That's really interesting. Why? She hates it so much. It's so interesting that she would do that. Huh. How'd you do that? Is it just sentimentality? Is it just because of the memories of the club? Can it just be that? I'm... Zeroed out the budget and said he could keep sitting on his ass while the club managed itself. Uh huh. Be like, look, if, if if you let us just keep running as a club, you don't have to do anything. That's, that's a good argument. <laughs> so Darren and I just helped make more of an informal case for leaving the club alone. As long as we keep quiet and manage our affairs, the professor's lack of attendance will slide under the radar. Which also means that Millie's paying out of pocket for everything. From the reference books to every perfectly organized pen, notebook, and marker. <gasps> this is... <laughs> it's devastating. This is devastating. I feel like I should be asking why. That really doesn't matter. You should be thanking me for keeping your lifeline afloat for this long instead. Everyone say thank you, Heather. <laughs> thank you, Heather. Even when she's right, she's insufferable. <laughs> oh my
my goodness, Gigi. Hello. Thank you for the resub. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. We all say it. Say it in like the... I don't know if this, this is the same in other countries. If I said to somebody in the UK, uh, say it in the assembly voice, in the school assembly voice, the primary school assembly voice, everyone would do the same voice. The, thank you, Heather. Good morning, Mrs. Surname. <laughs> the, the kind of like the slow drone of loads of children trying to say the same thing at the same pace. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. We say it with so much passion. <laughs> but thank you so much for the reset for 28 months. Oh my goodness, that's so many. That's so many months. Thank you so much. I hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesday. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Be back in a bit. Oh, thank you for the luck. Thank you very much. It is very appreciated. I hope you have good food. 2.8 years, as some might say. I, ca I can't believe you've been here for 28 years. Thank you. Thank you for the 28 year sub. <laughs> uh, as an American, you can confirm you've never heard that term, but you know the tone. Yeah, it's it's because of like, there's, there's a thing in a lot of uh, British primary schools where at the start of every day there will be assembly and it's basically everyone files into a big hall sits on really uncomfortable benches um sings a hymn i don't remember much of it now it was a long time ago and that i i don't i genuinely don't remember why assemblies are a thing just droning in and then like the headmaster or headmistress stands at the front everyone stands up and goes good morning da 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 good morning everyone at that same kind of drone <laughs> And I and then we go back to class. It's why is it a thing? I don't know why it's a thing. It might not even still be a thing anymore. I'm old. I'm old. It's been a while since I went to school. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's always that that same kind of drone with with young children when it's like say good morning, be like good morning, like reciting. It's like reciting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, assemblies are common in your country too yeah like a briefing for things and stuff such yeah I'm, I'm trying to actually think now i genuinely don't remember how it went oh hold on i can i can skip through this i can skip through while we talk about assemblies <laughs> i'm trying to think it may have just been once a week i think it may have just been a once a week thing but one thing I always remember when I was in school, um, when I was in school and there would be an assembly, everyone would pile into the, the hall and we would, we'd all have to sit on the floor in lines. We would sit on the floor, but then the year sixes, which is like the, the oldest year of primary school, the year sixes would be allowed to sit on the gym benches at the back. And I remember when I was younger, I would always be like, I can't wait to be in year six so I can sit on the bench instead of the floor. <laughs> and then I was in year six and it was like, well, the benches are so hard and uncomfortable. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> so funny to think back on. Ah, oh, it feels messed up. No, it wasn't messed up. We, we, we all just like sat cross-legged on the floor and it, it was never for a long time. It was just everyone in the hall together just be like, okay, letting you know this, we'll sing our hymn. Uh, He's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> Have like the little bit of information and then we'd all like line out to our classes. <laughs> oh, I always remember the hymns. I knew so many hymns. So wild to think about. I feel like it's the kind of thing that wouldn't be pushed nowadays because it was a it was a very like specifically Christian thing, which is really interesting as well because I'm I'm very much not a Christian. <laughs> I'm not religious at all in the slightest. But we would always have our assemblies with our religious hymns. 
<sighs> Memories. Oh, I feel so old. I need to stop. Anyway, we've got another Heather scene. I'm excited. Oh, welcome back to... Welcome back, Kiroboros. You're here just in time for more Heather time. After stressing about everything for so long, it feels unusual to only be concerned with figuring out how to kill time. The final club meeting of the semester was today, or it was supposed to be. Heather and uh, Darren were no-shows, and even Tanya only bothered poking her head in for a few minutes. Unfortunately, there were still things that needed doing, even if no one was around to do them. After helping her clean the room up, she sent me away while she finishes organizing some paperwork. I would have been more than fine staying with her, but if she wants to be alone, I won't argue with her. My solution is to aimlessly wander the halls. A college campus isn't the best place to find entertainment, and no better ideas cross my mind. That is, of course, until my meandering about eventually leads me to the AV room. May there be a Heather? May have. I wonder if she's even on campus anymore. I put my hand on the doorknob, not entirely positive I want to know the answer. Her not being there is actively better for everyone's mental health. <laughs> oh, it's so sad thinking about that. It's, it is true, it is true, but it's still sad. Also, Jester, hello, thank you for the head pad. Welcome, welcome on in, it's Two Fault Tuesday. We're befriending Heather. I did not expect this to take me half of the stream, but here I am, being as slow as usual. It's fun. <laughs> At the same time, for whatever reason, Millie seems to consider her constant flaking to be a bad thing. That being enough to steal my nerves, I push down. There's no resistance, and the door opens. Darren. Darren, I, I thought I thought you liked the club. <laughs> Darren. Darren, what's happening? Why did you flake on the <laughs> They both flaked on the club meeting for this. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the door knock. We're not knocking though, we're just going in. <laughs> but thank you for door knock. I feel my heart sink. It's only the back of their heads, but I immediately spy not one, but two clubmates watching some out of season horror junk. Not the right floor, not even the right building. You need to forget where the writing club meets. Calling them out. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Wearing headphones and those door knocks are way too close right now. Yeah, the. <laughs> I love how it gets everybody else as well. The, the door knock very rarely gets me now. I've gotten used to it, so if anyone like actually knocked on my door, I'd probably ignore them at this point. <laughs> but sometimes it does still get me. It's, it's when I'm really not expecting it. But it's, it's fun because it gets everyone else too. Hee <laughs> hee. Knock knock, it's me. Let me in. <laughs> As expected, Darren jumps from his seat, standing at attention. Heather's arguably even more predictable, turning her head in annoyance before pausing the movie and taking to her feet as well. Very observant. Why are you still here if not for the meeting? The semester's over. Is it really just a matter of spite? Oh, no, I don't think it is that. I think these two have become friends. Maybe even more Who knows? Who knows? I, these two seem to be getting along really well, though. I think, like... I'm suspicious. I'm thinking... Oh, it's gonna start getting you when you move out soon. Oh no, I'm so sorry if... I'm sorry if that happened. <laughs> oh, that... I, I can't imagine hearing a knock on the door living alone. I would be terrified. See, I, I live in a household with two other people and also a cat. A cat that isn't me. So I'm used to random noises. I I don't jump at random noises. I kind of expect it. 
correct again. You're just a natural-born intellect, aren't you? Heather! I guess I should have expected as much. From her, anyway. My eyes turned to Darren. I really didn't expect this kind of thing from him, especially after this morning. That's not what happened at all. I was going to go today, really. Oh? You were? Also, Brisket, hello! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Happy Twofold Tuesday! Oh, <laughs> living in a perpetual thriller movie. Good times. It's okay. It's okay. If you're self aware, then the villain can't get you. <laughs> and. They're going to? What happened? Hold on, I need to sit up straight. I'm slouching. I gotta stop slouching. There we go. Ugh, I, I think I've, I've moved some stuff under my desk. I can't put my feet where I usually do. <laughs> and it feels really weird. Ah, doing good, tired. Oh, I, I hope you can wake up soon. But thank you for stopping in. Welcome, for, welcome to Twofold Tuesday. We're figuring out what Heather's deal is. I'm excited. <laughs> I got ambushed. <gasps> Excuse me, Heather? Heather? Oh, thank you for wasting your points! The abyss is sated. Yeah, you're safe now, don't worry. You, you bought yourself immunity. <laughs> immunity to horror thriller mishaps. <laughs> if, it was anyone, if it was anyone else, I'd brush it off. But that response feels oddly in character for him. I was actually heading over when Heather intercepted me and dragged me here instead. Oh. Was this really a more appealing invitation than the club? Yes. Sorry. I'm sorry, but it kind of is. No. I mean she literally dragged me. By the arm. Oh, Heather, what the heck? Heather! Wow, now she's playing dirty. She's actively kidnapping the club members. Excuse me. And Darren would be way too polite to pull away. If he starts getting dragged somewhere, he's going there. <laughs> He'd be way too polite. Yeah, so what's her deal, her? That's what I want to know. That's what we're figuring out. So far, the stuff we know about Heather is she was the original member of the writing club. Uh, Millie took over the club. Everyone left because they graduated. Um, the supervisor doesn't care about the club. There's only three members there, and one of them was Tanya, who literally was there to make up numbers. And I don't know why Heather has got it out for Millie. Like, Millie is trying so hard. And Heather seems to have beef with her. And I want, I want to know why. I want to know why. It can't be that she blames Millie for the club falling apart. I... Surely. Surely. No, I think she probably does blame Millie, but I'm... I'm excited to find out more about her. I, I want to know her deal. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> Don't you giggle at me. I guess that's as good a confirmation as any. The only thing I can think to do is sigh. I will never understand you. Yeah, me neither. Oh, my mic's in the wrong place now that I'm sitting up properly. <laughs> oh, for some reason, I can't get my headphones comfortable today. I don't know why. It might be my hair. To be honest, I, I, I need to wash my hair. I think it might be that. I'll wash my hair later. Ugh. Okay, I can deal. I can deal with it. I really, I w I want to understand Heather. I wish I could understand her. <laughs> she really is so smug. She's super smug. And that's such a disappointment. I was really hoping I'd have a fellow agent in chaos before Millie dug her claws into you. What do you mean by that? What part of me screamed agent of chaos to you exactly? She gives me a quick once-over, her previous smirk quickly turning to a frown. Pickings are slim nowadays. You take what you can get. 
as should be evident by now. Look, Heather, if you're bad mouthing Darren right now, I will fight you. <laughs> she tilts her head in Darren's direction. She is so rude. She is so rude. Why is she so rude? What are you? You're so rude. Rude, rude, rude woman. Rude. Wait a sec. I don't have anything against Millie at all. Excuse me? You flake even more than I do, which is quite the accomplishment. But he has anxiety. You're just a terrible person. That's something else entirely. You've got the wrong idea. Right. Darren's doing his best. I will not hear a word against Darren. I will fight. I will, I will, I will fight anyone for Darren. I love him. Uh, worst of feelings is headphones not sitting right. Oh yeah, it's not about the pads. It's, it's the, the, the band at the top at the moment. Cause I've, I've got over, over ear headphones and I can't seem to just position it properly at the moment. It just feels weird. And I think it is just because I need to wash my hair, but that's okay. I can do that later. Uh, it's okay. Her frown sinks even deeper. This woman is entirely beyond, comp beyond comprehension. The last time we spoke one-on-one, -on -one, she was talking about how she's been trying to keep the writing club afloat. What gives? Then all you're doing is interrupting my alone time. Out, both of you. Hello? Her alone time that she forcefully dragged another person into. Darren doesn't need any more encouragement as he strides past me and out the door. I'm not so eager, watching as Heather returns to her seat and resumes her film. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna try something very quickly. Don't don't worry if I start staring off into the distance. Give me a, give me a sec. Hi. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Don't mind me. I'm just moving. <laughs> oh, the problem you have is that your headphones fit too well, so when you take them off, your Oh no. Oh, I think I would cry if I if I got my head caught in my headphones. <laughs> I'm very glad I've never had that problem. Huh. Darren doesn't need any more encouragement as he strides past me and out the door. I'm not so eager, watching as Heather returns to her seat and resumes her film. Like, she, she's done this on purpose. She's watching this on purpose as the club meeting is happening. To prove a point? Question mark? Why are you doing this? Heather, why are you like this? Why are you doing this? Why? Why? Not another word from her. No snark. Not even an acknowledgement of my presence. I return the gesture in full quietly making my exit. What's her deal? What's her deal? Darren, do you know anything? Do you know anything? Do you know what's going on here, Darren? Darren's still waiting outside, much to my surprise. I expected him to be halfway home by now with how fast he booked it out the door. What's up? I just wanted to apologize oh. for how this entire thing went down, oh. I guess. I know you have personal stakes in this now, too. Uh, you could say that. So sorry, chat, gotta stand Heather. I really want to know what her deal is. Like, she... Why? I just want to know why. I just want to know why. And if I ask her that, she's not gonna say. <laughs> I guess it's hard to deny that given the last few minutes. Sorry, my, my mic stands squeaking again. Even if the initial shock of him being here was a downer, it's at least a relief to see my gut reaction was wrong. You and Heather painted a pretty complete picture of what happened. I don't blame you. He was trying. I'm so glad to hear that. You wouldn't believe. Oh, it's okay, Darren. We could never think badly of you. I could never think badly of Darren. I just, I, I, I support him. I want him to grow up big and strong. 
I protect. And Mama, hello! Happy Twofold Taco Tuesday! Oh, I, d I don't have tacos, but I, I do have Twofold. <laughs> Hi, welcome, welcome! I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in, we're trying to figure out what Heather's deal is. He's noticeably more at ease now. As his posture relaxes, his head begins to sink, a curious expression on his face. Are you thinking? If she showed up on campus just to spite Millie, how did she plan to do that? By making sure nobody showed up to the meeting, I think. If you didn't show up, I doubt anyone would have ever even found out. Yeah. But they still wouldn't have been in the meeting. That's... Huh. Hmm. Hmm. I, I want to know why. It's not as simple as just like, yeah, I just did this to spite Millie. This... She's plotting something. She's, she's planning something. Hmm. I face the door, not sure what I'm expecting to get from it. Was she planning something after the fact? Was it a lie? If it was, then why is she actually here? Well, whatever her plan was, it's not happening now. Guess not. Both of us continue to stand there, not quite sure where to go from here. Uh, I'm gonna get going. Tell Millie sorry for me too, if you don't mind. I'll try to be better about showing up from now on. I promise. Oh, Darren, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you, Darren. Hmm? Yeah, gotcha. I'm sure she'll understand. See you around. And with a small wave, he's gone. I should probably start making my way back to the writing room soon, too. Brinley, hello! Welcome, welcome! Darren! I love Darren. He's... He's so lovely. He's just so wonderful. But welcome, welcome! Twofold Tuesday! And oh, Taco Cat, the, the second rule of the jungle. I, I know none of the rules of the jungle. I, I don't think I've ever visited a jungle in my life. I, I don't mind tacos, though. Depends on what's in the tacos. <laughs> but hi, welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday! <laughs> I'll also work on that. Wait, wait, I don't want to go to the jungle. I do so badly in heat. I feel like jungles are warm and humid. I would perish, please. Oh, actually, no, audio jungles are fine. Audio jungle. Audio jungle. Audio jungle. But yes, please, please don't send me to the jungle. I, I wouldn't survive there. One question, why does Darren have a dog tag? Why not? Fashion statement. <laughs> I I think I feel like when it, when I was when I was younger I definitely had a dog tag necklace at some point. I don't remember what was on it, but there was something engraved on it. Something like teenage edgy probably. I don't I don't remember too well now. But yeah, th why not? <laughs> And Higadoi Rinon, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. How's it going? Happy Twofold Tuesday. Uh, how's the new AC working out? I haven't set it up yet, but it's it's cooler weather today. It's The weather's gone back to normal for now, so I, I don't need it yet. But I, I've still got to set it up. It'll It's a work in progress. <laughs> I'm hoping tomorrow I can set aside some time to properly figure it out. But over the weekend, I, I was just... I started looking through the information for the AC and I, I, I could feel my eyes glazing over and I was like, I do not have the mental fortitude to figure this out today. So I didn't. <laughs> but hopefully tomorrow. I'm, I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow because I need a day to catch up on life stuff. So hopefully tomorrow I can also have a poke at the AC. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, wait, you have Persona 4 Arcana dog tags. Wait, that's so cool. I love that. <laughs> that's really cool. I want those. 
Uh, also, Europe cooling down wasn't my ACs doing. No, unfortunately not. Or maybe it was. Maybe the weather got intimidated as soon as it realized I had AC, that I didn't even have to turn it on. And it backed away. Just the threat of it. <laughs> anyway, back to back to Heather figuring out what's going on with Heather. <laughs> as I start my short journey back, I can't help but wonder how Heather would feel learning of Darren's commitment to showing up more as a result of all this. That was literally the last line of the scene. I could have been skipping. I could have been skipping this whole time as I talked, I think. Yeah, we're, we're back to skipping. <laughs> oh, if I'd just read that one line, I could have just had this going while we were talking about AC. <laughs> I'm so smart and clever. I'm gonna have monster. Get freeze! Fake dating! Skip, skip. <laughs> Short melee! Woo! <laughs> Come on in! Come on in, the door is open. Uh, you woke up to a TikTok on your For You page of a Brit losing his mind because the temperature most Americans have their AC at to cool down is the temperature of British heat waves. No, no, British heat waves are way, are way higher than that. <laughs> like, he heat waves in the UK are getting to, like, levels of, like, 30C now. But also, it's, like, it's so different depending on, like, the, like, the atmosphere as well. Like, UK on a map is like in line with Canada. People don't realize how high north the UK is. We've got more like northern climates and northern atmospheres and stuff. So cold doesn't hit as badly here as it would in places that are used to warm weather. And on that same note as well, uh, warm weather over here we can't deal with because it, it just gets worse. <laughs> But uh, the thing is, the problem is, what some people don't realize as well with UK houses, I, I feel very passionately about this, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> if we say that the, the weather outside is 24 degrees Celsius, for an example, it's going to be warmer than that inside. Because it may be 24 outside, but a lot of the time, if you don't have AC, if you don't have windows and air circulating the whole time, the just living as a human being, you generate heat. And UK houses build, like they're, they're built in a way that keeps the heat in. So not only do we have the general temperature of the world being 24, we are constantly then heating that up with ourselves as well, with our body temperatures, which do get pretty high. And that heat lingers, that heat stays. It doesn't have a way to like be vented out without like, we don't have like AC systems as general. And if you don't have all of the windows open and fans blowing the air out, it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So the weather forecast can say, yeah, it's uh, 22 degrees today and it'll be like 28 inside the house. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. It's, and so then when it gets hotter outside as well, it makes it even worse. So it's, it's like, if it's 24 outside, then I would be happy to also set the AC at 24 and have it actually be 24 instead of the increasing degrees from body temperature. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's, it's something that really is like, the kind of thing that a lot of people don't think about. And it's something I notice a lot on the internet. Thankfully, I've seen it less this year than I have in previous years. But there are, there are so many people who just don't understand. 
people will be like, well, you say it's 24 degrees. That's a normal temperature. That's how I always have my AC at or whatever. Be like, yeah, I have my AC at 22. It's great. And it feels different in both places. Like I've, I, I've seen several times, like I'll see the weather forecast and it'll be like, yeah, it's 23 degrees today. I'll have the little thermometer in my room and it's reading 27. It's <laughs> the heat just lingers, it lingers. The, the, the houses are built for insulation. There's, they're thick brick houses with insulation to keep the heat in. So it's, it's never just the temperature that it says it is. It's usually considerably warmer than that. And it's humid because we get a lot of rain. It gets very damp. It's like very heavy, heavy, damp heat. And like, I'm only speaking for myself, of course, but I end up getting really sweaty as well. And I, I feel like I would be so fine with dry heat if I wasn't sweating as much. But with it being like really humid heat where I end up sweating, that's when I get really uncomfortable. And that's when the heat gets so much worse and I struggle. So, uh, yeah, today you've learnt about heat in different environments. Uh, I thank you, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> it's something that I, I do like to share because it's something I also didn't know myself for the longest time. And it would always make me feel bad when I would complain about, like, oh, the weather outside is 25 degrees Celsius. And then other people would be like, well, that's nothing. I would feel bad. Like, am I making a big deal over nothing? But like, the more I learnt, when I when I learnt like why it feels so much worse, and also when I got my little thermometer that showed what temperature it actually was, it really put so many things into perspective for me. So I like being able to let other people know about that, if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, back back to back to Heather. <laughs> Speaking of feeling uncomfortable, but yeah, that's exactly it. Just sometimes you just melt into a puddle and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> uh, right, anyway, back to this. Uh, despite how I started last semester, I was actually looking forward to classes starting up again. Any sort of return to normalcy after how the holidays went would be welcome. And then the process of getting my textbooks started. Oh, here we go, fun times. The libraries fill to the brim with students, lugging around piles of books larger than themselves. I was hoping to get ahead of the curve, but it looks like literally every single other student had the same idea. I heave a heavy sigh. My collection of books is modest compared to last semester's extra workload, but that isn't going to get me out of here any faster. Some students have come to the same grim realization, choosing instead to simply take a seat and wait out the crowd. Thinking that may not be such a terrible idea myself, I start scouring for an available seat. Unfortunately, the tables are just as crowded as the rest of the library. Ah, oh, thank you for the work, work, Gigi. I hope your work goes well. Hope you have a, a productive work day. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh my goodness, we, we haven't seen much of Wallace on Millie's route. I'm... <laughs> Hello, I forgot what he looked like. <laughs> I eventually find a chair to call my own, with a couple of students having a conversation between themselves at the otherwise empty table. And what an unusual couple of students they are. Hey, Haley. I managed to catch her attention despite the best efforts of the hustle and bustle of the library in the background. She leans against the back of her chair, flagging me over. Feel free to take a seat. We're probably going to be here a while. Yeah. Needing no further prompting, I accept her invitation, placing my small stack of books on the table in front of me as I do so. Finally properly settled in, my attention turns to Haley's conversation partner. Um... Wallace. Hi. Right. Sorry. It's been a while. Ah, oh, love the color combo here. Yeah, we've we've got all the secondary colors here. We've got the purple, orange, green. We've got the secondary colors. <laughs> I love it. 
It works. It works so well. Don't worry. I get you. Good talk. You could have worse timing. We were actually just talking about the Redding Club. Oh, great. I'm sure it's good things. I'm sure it's... I'm sure it's positive. Right? <laughs> oh? Millie's a friend of mine, so I try to keep an ear on the ground when uh -huh. I can. Which means I know everything about you, obviously. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah. If I doubted he and Millie had history, I definitely don't now. They're both so good at effortlessly being terrified when they want to be. <laughs> oh, Wallace intimidation. Hi. Relax. It's all positive. <laughs> Mostly. Though there's bound to be some bias there from Millie's point of view. No, it's it's not bias. It, it's, they're just great. <laughs> you love smug Wallace? Me too. Look at that face. I love that. Relax. <laughs> I dig my face further into my scarf. What has she been saying? I'm so curious. It's like, it makes me wonder, like, has she been telling stories about the, the fictional fake dating dates to Wallace? Because if she has, that's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, about the club? <laughs> Dead in the water, despite my best efforts. Hi, Heather. Hi. Nobody asked. An interruption that simultaneously puts the three of us on edge as soon as we place the voice. As if on cue, Heather makes her grand entrance, plopping herself down in the other empty chair besides me, tossing her books haphazardly on the table. That seat's taken. Oh, really? By whom? By literally anyone else. <laughs> Adding pink to the gradient. <laughs> Ooh, vicious. Well, it's interesting, though, because Heather has this kind of, like, lavenderish shade as well. So it, another shade of purple. Just ease it in there a little bit. Heather brings a hand up, curling it up in, uh, into a claw before giving a small swipe, all accented by the smirk that's permanently struck, uh, stuck to her face. Rawr. I'm like Apple here. <laughs> Just an ordinary member of the writing club. If you're talking about the state of the thing, I think I'm entitled to listen in. She's just doing fruits. She's just doing any fruit at this point. She does not care. She fully knows their name is Olive. She's just like, oh yeah, banana. <laughs> uh, yeah, the art is so beautiful in this. It really is. The art is so perfect. I love the styling so much. I love like the the comic book, like the cutout, the cutout styling, like the the collage effect. It's it works so well. Feel free to listen in, a few tables over, without the commentary. It's nice to know that everyone has the same view of Heather. Uh, great. You wound me, Wally. <laughs> <sighs> Wally. She's managed to put the entire table on lockdown in a matter of seconds. If nothing else, she seems to have a genuine talent for that. <laughs> I'm not really in the mood to listen to you brag about how much you screwed the club over. Hmm. I did no such thing. My target was exclusively Millie. Why? Why? Millie is such a sweetheart. She's trying her best. She's enough of a girl failure without active sabotage. Please, leave Millie alone. I say that with the, the most love in my heart, by the way. She may be a girl failure, but she's a girl failure. <laughs> what the? Actually, no. I don't care. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Don't let her. Don't let her bait you. Don't. Don't let her. Heather's been keeping the club from closing down behind the scenes. 
Negotiating with the people who manage the budget and stuff. Hey! She looks surprised that we, we mentioned that. Hey. Aha. Uh -huh. A couple of surprised expressions and one scowl at the table. I'm tired of the esoterics and Heather's lost any kind of goodwill from me a while ago. Yeah, we're just gonna out her. <laughs> we're just gonna reveal it right here. We're just like, uh, actually... You, you put up this, like, hard exterior. You talk about sabotaging and breaking the club. Then why are you trying to save it? What's your deal, Heather? Didn't think you had it in you to snitch. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're constantly finding new ways to surprise me, too. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, then what the hell is the point of all this? What's your game? Heather responds with a scoff. One of the three expressions she's able to pull off. <laughs> I love that it's just like scoff, frown, smug. Th those are the, the only Heather expressions that exist. She is always either scoffing, frowning, or smirking. <laughs> like, th that's it. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she ended it there. And for a while, it seems like she's going to do just that. But eventually she finds her words. I told you exactly why. Millie's the problem, not the club itself. Why? Without her, there is no club. Managed just fine without her before, I seem to recall. I catch myself clenching my fist. How can this woman look so nonchalant when she's sharing a table with three people who can't stand her? I guess this is just the kind of element where she thrives. Yeah, she's a, a... She feeds off chaos, I think. She consumes drama. So what? You're keeping it around as long as possible and tearing down Millie all the while? That's torture. This somehow manages to get under Heather's skin when nothing else can. She straightens herself, no longer leaning lazily on the table. Don't assume things, Brad. I genuinely, sincerely loved that place. I may have only been there for a semester before Millie took over, but it was the best time I had in this hellhole. Uh. She lost herself for a moment, but she manages to regain her typical composure. At what felt like just inches away from the peak, she deflates back down, resting her head on the back of her hand. All she's good at is shoving people away. I'm just trying to return the favor. For the love of... Heather, we've had this discussion. Uh... What do I have to say to convince you it was all just a matter of unfortunate timing? The popular members left, so people followed suit. The only reason I left was because of Eileen and Allison. Hmm, I wonder... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the luck, Nugs. I hope you have a good luck. Oh my goodness, she is infuriating. She is so infuriating. Oh, thank you for throwing a beach ball at me too. <laughs> I added a few uh, summer-themed things to the rotation of things you can throw at me. So if there may be some new stuff, like the giant beach ball you just threw. <laughs> but I hope you have a good luck. Thank you. She seems to give it genuine thought for a moment. Given that this supposedly isn't a new occurrence, though, I'm not sure how much stock I should put in that. Worm, thank you. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you could have convinced me if it was an isolated incident. Oh? What do you mean by that? Excuse me? I remember the overachiever from before she was playing leader. The only time she'd ever skip out on a meet was when her roomie needed something. Pretty much insufferable, as far as I remember. Oh. Hmm. Oh, there's a cat. The cat isn't new, but I do like the cat. Thank you for throwing things at me. <laughs> Summer things laughs in UK. I'm also from the UK. I'm also UK. I, th I think it's safe to say it's summer at this point, with with the heat that was around last week. I'm I'm happy saying it's summer now. I'm like I'm like yeah. And I wish I could just go to the beach. 
have a fun time, but I... <laughs> but that involves going to the beach, so... <laughs> oh, thank you for the, the cube as well. Many cubes. Wait, cube doesn't work? No, it, it just did. <laughs> it drops on my head, it doesn't throw it from the side. The Tetris also, like, the, the ones that are the chat commands, if you type something I in chat, think. they're the ones that just drop on my head. I never, I can never think. It's part of my, my charm. <laughs> but yeah, the, the ones that are, that drop in, in chat, are, like, drop on my head. The throw things come from the side. Ah, oh, got some really lovely beach photography. Oh, we got a gay heart, nice. Oh, I, I love like pictures of the ocean and stuff. I think it's really nice. Anyway, back to Heather, so. Is she talking about Caprice right now? Hey. And then I take my little break, and after I return, I'm met with an empty room in a rival club <gasps> whose leader can't stand Millie. Weird coincidence. Oh, she's got this so wrong. Oh, no. Oh, she, she doesn't know anything, and she has got this so wrong. Caprice made the art club before all this kicked off. Caprice made the art club before the the reveals of like the wedding and stuff. That was when they fell out. That was when the fallout happened. Like Caprice started doing that before things got bad. Well, they may have like been a little bit bad because it they were like in the relationship, but it was it was before the wedding revelation. But she has oh, she's she thinks that Millie drove Caprice out of the club. <sighs> but it's so much more complicated than that. It's like she, she knows nothing about Millie's situation and I'm in so much pain. My heart hurts. My heart hurts. It's the same as Tanya. It's like when Tanya was just like, yeah, yeah I hate that brat, that stupid Caprice. Only because she's only ever heard the bad things from when Millie's ranting. She had such a wrong idea, and Heather also has such a wrong idea. Like, I... She is... Every time something's happened, she's managed to, like, figure out a way that makes Millie the villain for, like, all of it. I think if anything happened now, like, I, th I think, like, even if... Like, Darren stopped showing up at the club, Heather would find a way to blame Millie for that. Like, she would find a way at this point. She's gotten so... She's so sure that Millie is the problem here that she hasn't even, like, started to think of other situations. She's just got it out for Millie. Can we even get through to her at this point, though? I'm like, what What can we even say to her? What can we... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. You don't have the right to talk about that. Like, at all. It's so much more complicated than that, Heather. It's... <laughs> Even Haley's deadpan nature is starting to crack. I'm not sure how much more I can take of this either. I'm not sure how much more I can take of this either. For her to be so wrong on every single front, but unable to come to terms with it. Seriously, why do you even care about the actual club? If you're upset about your friends leaving, go get their phone numbers or whatever. Oh, need to find a better way to say cube roll Xander Tetris without just spouting random words. No, you can just spout random words, it's fine. <laughs> just like, Im imagine Xander roll cube playing Tetris. Perfect. We got it. Nailed it. But yeah, confirmation bias at its finest. Interesting advice. Have you tried passing it on to your girlfriend, too? I feel a shout rising in my throat, but I managed to restrain it once I remember where we are. Instead, settling for a harsh whisper. 
Millie wants the club to succeed because she actually cares about the writing side of things, not because it's where her old buddies chose to crash. Whatever twisted common ground you think you two have, you don't. When... If the club eventually goes under, Millie will still have people who care about her. Oh, it feels so bad that they said when there, but it's also like... yeah. You could have said the same if you chose to try and reach out to your friends instead of dedicating your life to spiting her for half a year. Yeah, like... Is that really the whole reason? Like, I'm... I'm what? That's one heck of a grudge to hold for no good reason. That is such a waste of energy. I'm... I don't understand. I don't understand Heather at all. I... I wish I did. I don't understand her. The four of us go silent, allowing ourselves to drown in the chatter of the crowded library. I keep waiting for anyone else to kick up another argument, but the only noise that comes from any of us are Heather's fingers tapping lightly against one of her text's covers. Eventually, our unwelcome guest finally picks herself up, throwing her books under her arm. Well, I'm tired of sitting around. See at least one of you losers later. So none of that stuck, huh? Well, whatever. The three of us are eager to see her go, watching in unison as she disappears from sight before properly breathing a sigh of relief. I can't stand her. Me too. No kidding. I pinch the bridge of my nose as I glance over at the seat she had only recently been occupying. The only thing on my mind being the hope that I haven't made things harder for Millie. Oh. Oh, well, that went so well, huh? All right, we skipping? Yeah, we skipping. Mr. Mo! Meow. Meow. Uh, yeah, it's such a drawing story, though. Oh, no, actually, this is a writing story. We'll be doing the drawing story next. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was that was a terrible joke. <laughs> ah, here we go. The last Heather scene. <laughs> the final meeting of the writing club is an unsurprisingly solemn affair. Solemn affair. The energy Millie had on display at our first meeting is all but spent, and the others don't have much to say on the matter. One thing that struck me, though, is that it's a full house. Relatively, anyway. Everyone managed to make it, something I haven't seen in who knows how long. Okay. All right. <laughs> good dad joke, thank you. I love puns. I love bad jokes. I think they're good jokes. I actually don't think bad jokes are a thing. I think there's good jokes and unfunny jokes. But none are bad. <laughs> no, actually they're probably objectively are bad jokes. Never mind. But I when when people say bad jokes, like referring to puns and stuff, I think they're great. I I would say bad joke is like a term of endearment for those kind of puns. I love them. <laughs> Uh, why did the coffee file a police report? Because it got mugged. <laughs> like that. Those types of jokes. Those jokes. I love those jokes. <laughs> I love them so much. I'm the kind of person who will unironically laugh if someone goes like, when is a door not a door? When it's a jar. <laughs> like, I'm so easy to amuse. <laughs> I love puns. They're great. <laughs> What's brown and sticky? A stick! A stick, yes! A classic. What are other, like, classic puns? I can't think of any off the top of my head now, but I know so many fun pun jokes. I just... Yeah, my, my, my brain's just empty. Either way, it's Heather time. It's time for the final club meeting, but Heather, Heather route. 
Not much writing talk happens. It'd be unusual if that wasn't the case, I suppose. It's a quick get-together, mostly a formal announcement of the closure. And just as quick as it began, it ends. As the three make their exit, Tanya and Darren sharing their condolences and goodbyes, the entire meeting adopts the feeling of a funeral more so than an extracurricular activity. Millie and I stand together, hovering around the door for a while, Millie idly playing with the room's keys. <laughs> this is the most inappropriate time for puns, I love it. I had to sell my vacuum, it was just gathering dust. <laughs> That's another beautiful one. It's another beautiful one. <laughs> but this is like the worst time for it. Right, I'm so curious as to how differently this is going to go though. Well, we should start packing things up. Yeah. We can stick around a while longer if you'd like. No, no, best not to dwell. Please dwell if it'll make you feel better. Dwell as long as you need to. My silent hopes go unanswered as she makes her way to her desk and begins filing her notes away. I follow suit, stuffing my books and folders into my bag. Absorbed in organizing our stuff, we're both given quite a jump as the old door creaks open again. I turn around and am met with the one thing I absolutely did not want to see. Hi, Heather. Still at it, hmm? The last thing Millie needs right now is an extra heaping of salt in the wound. Get lost. God, I love this music. Relax. I won't be around long, I assure you. Did you leave something behind? In a manner of speaking, I suppose. She wastes no time sauntering her way to the front desk, opposite to Millie. She rests her palms on its surface, leaning in, staring into Millie's eyes. I tried so hard to get rid of you. And now she got rid of herself. She's gonna be so mad. <laughs> Heather's gonna be so mad. Millie got rid of herself. Heather didn't get rid of her. Hey. You were nice enough, if a bit starry-eyed at the start. As another cog in the machine, you were harmless. But then I duck out. Not for long, just half a year to change my career path and take a break from it all. Not a big deal. At least when I got back, I'd have a home to return to. Heather. And when I finally returned, all the people who made this tolerable were gone. In their place was the new queen, sitting atop her throne in her empty castle. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. Millie picked up the pieces where no one else was. Millie was only on that cra on that throne because there was no one else there. She took up that mantle. And it was not easy. And Heather's just being like, or well, she just sauntered up and became queen. I'm like, oh, grr, grr, grr. After semesters of feigning patience and taking all of Heather's vileness on the chin, Millie's facade finally, finally, finally starts to crack. People transferred out and followed their friends. What did you want me to do? It's a big moment, or at least a cathartic one. But Heather won't allow herself to be vanquished by something so authentic and sincere. She still wears that smug little smile like everything is always going her way, even as the club she fought so hard to preserve dies. Leave. Would she just stop? No matter how much I try to ramp up the sternness of my tone, it's as if I don't exist in her world right now. I desperately want to drag her from that desk, and it's becoming harder to resist the urge. It 
you were out of the picture, I could pry the club from your hands and try to salvage it. It felt like the only thing I could do for the people who left me behind. Heather. That's what I... That's what That's Millie what was I... trying to do. Yep. And you failed. You tried so hard to... But the deck was stacked against you. And I can say that as one of the cards. But you still failed. She makes me so mad. She makes me so mad. Even from across the room, I can see the tears starting to form in Millie's eyes as Heather confronts her with the state of things. That serves as my breaking point as I start making my way up to the front. I'm sorry. Nope, I'm not done. The club is gone, and the second you lock those doors, all the memories and friends made here will be null and void. It will have amounted to nothing. It won't! Those friendships stay. You, you don't just suddenly forget everything. You keep those memories, you keep those friends. I think this stems from Heather being left behind. I think this is less about the club and more about all of Heather's friends moving on and not talking to her anymore. I think that's what this is about. This place that we fought over, stressed about, made each other miserable for. It's gone. I should be angry. I should be cursing your name up and down the halls by now. Do you understand me? It would be the right thing to do. Because it's what you deserve for screwing up everything. She that wasn't Millie. All right, I've heard enough. Olive. That's funny, because I don't think I was talking to you. Ooh. And I don't remember asking you. Olive, it's fine. Ooh. I expected to get interrupted, but not by Millie. The shock of it is enough to stop me in my tracks immediately. Heather. I wasn't fin- Olive and I are dating. Do you think we don't talk? All of this. Everything. You keeping the club going despite everything. Trying to drag people away from it all the while. All that talk about the old guard that you know isn't true. None of it. None of it makes sense. Everything you say, everything you do, contradicts itself. Right, like what, what, what is her deal? I still don't know. But I get it. Oh, wait. Yeah, if anyone knows about irrational feelings, it's gonna be Millie. Millie has been like the... The captain of irrational feelings in this whole game. Heather and I share a dumbstruck expression, though I imagine it's for different reasons. You're grieving. You've been grieving. The world doesn't make sense, and it feels impossible to try and fix that. It's so easy to lash out. It's even easier to make up a villain in your head and focus all that frustration on them. <laughs> Even if it's someone you care about. The person you want to lean on more than anyone else, but just can't. I promise you, you're entirely off base there. Is she? Trust me, I'm aware. A huff from Heather in response to Millie's, sm Millie's snark. Part of me wants to laugh, but the desire to let Millie continue outweighs that. She's talking to herself as much as Heather at this point. And I can only hope she's listening. Yeah, she she's she's not saying, oh yeah, Heather wants to lean on Millie. That that's not what's happening here. That's not what this conversation is about. I love the thought of Heather just being like, you you're so wrong. I don't want to lean on you. Just not getting the message behind it. <sighs> My point being, I guess, is that. Well, I'm not a very interesting antagonist, and you're a pretty boring villain. Yeah, the, this story isn't very interesting. This, 
it's getting to the point where you you don't want the story to continue. That's that's not how things should be. That's not what life should be like. You want to write an interesting story. You want to enjoy the story you're in. <laughs> the club both of us were stressing out about for so long is gone. It stings right now, but I'm going to try my hardest to put it behind me the second I walk out that door. For better or worse, this dynamic we have, it's just not worth it anymore. There's no end goal to it. A short sigh, followed by a long pause. <sighs> I'm choosing to just take this weight off my shoulders and just try to remember what fond memories I made here. I'm not going to tell you to do the same, but I highly recommend it. Yeah. Heather maintains her position for what feels like minutes, managing to not once break eye contact with Millie. Eventually, though, she cracks as her elbows start to bend. I... <laughs> I am not going to apologize for how I treated either of you. I don't care. It's okay, we didn't expect you to. But if you wanted to reach out later, I'll lend you an ear. Oh? Millie smiles one of her bright smiles. After what feels like so long, it came as a relief to me to see it again. I appreciate that, Heather. If it's all the same, though, I'd prefer to never see you again. <laughs> Shot down, sorry. Sorry, you've, you've been too awful, no. You're not being forgiven for all the awful things. We're just gonna stop more awful things happening. <laughs> Despite the words, her tone is free from any malice or sarcasm, instead presented as a warm farewell. Heather, shockingly, matches it. <sighs> that works for me. See you around then, Millie. It's been fun. Agree to disagree. <laughs> With a smile or smirk, it's hard to tell, Heather finally lifts herself from the desk towards the door, but not before turning my way one last time. I think I finally see what you like about her. Could have gone worse. Listen to what Heather has to say. Be a befriend? Question mark? Heather? <laughs> yeah, it's not quite befriending for this route. <laughs> but we did it. We, we figured out some of Heather's deal. There's still a lot more going on there. There's... People are complex. The... They're never going to get along, but that's okay. You don't have to get along with everyone. I think that's one of the most important things to know. Nobody is going to get along with everyone. It is completely fine if a person is lovely, but you just don't get along with them. That's fine. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make you bad. Just sometimes people do better not being friends with each other. And it's something that took me a while to learn when I was younger. But it, there's so much freedom from knowing, like, it's okay. It's okay if you just don't get along sometimes. You don't have to get along with everyone. <laughs> it's about finding the people you do get along with. The people you enjoy spending time with. It's not worth wasting time on the people you don't enjoy spending time with. Oh. Glad to hear it. <laughs> See you never. Yeah, bye. Wasn't nice to meet you. Hope I don't see you again. Kisses. <laughs> I don't like Heather. I don't think I will ever like ever, 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 ever Heather. I don't think I will ever like Heather. But ultimately, I don't think she cares if she's liked or not. And I don't think she cares about being hated either. If anything, she was a victim of circumstance. There was something she loved, and for reasons outside of her or anyone else's control, it was taken away. She fought, and she fought, and all it amounted to was lashing out. All she wanted was for things to go back to normal, for her friends to come back, and for the writing club to be the happy family it once was. But it can't, it never can. So life goes on. For us, and with any luck, Heather too. We did it! <laughs> I didn't expect that to take me two hours. Oopsie. It's been a real tangent day today, but I'm, I'm okay with that. It's still nice. 
I'm still gonna skip through the the rest of the game just in case there's like a single line difference somewhere or something. I don't think there will be at this point, but we'll just we'll let it play through. <laughs> <laughs> Let it play through, I say, as I remember this whole scene and feel like crying again. <laughs> Ooh, I I love that moment so much. Oh, here we go. Yes, there's there's a there's a line here from the end of the That's club. That's good to hear. I've been worried. I know it was your idea to dissolve it, but the club was a pretty recent wound, so. It was for the best for everyone involved. I wouldn't call it a wound at all. Yeah. Well, that's what you really feel. I do. Honestly, the conversation with Heather made the decision worth it. Yes. Both of us finally said a lot of things we should have said a long time ago. Yeah, like immediately after this all happened. <laughs> Maybe she can finally devote energy to being happy. I hope she can. I hope she can too. I hope she devotes more energy to movies. I hope she makes her own... her own horror film. I hope she gets Darren on, on board to write the script and makes... and directs a horror film. Yeah, I hope so too. Hey, sorry if okay, this and then is I think weird. This is the same. Or yeah. That was the Heather line. I'm so glad. All right, what I'm going to do is I want to watch the credits again. Because I want to see the the single frame with Darren and Heather. I want to see what that's like. I want to look closer at it now after doing all three of the friendship paths. I want to see if I can make out like what's going on. But I love I love this so much. No, Olive, don't feed Mr. Mo. He's so chonky. Don't do it. I know he's cute. I feel like last time I saw the credits, I was just like really, really emotional. So I didn't like fully take it in. I want to fully look. Look at the art this time. Look, she, she drew Mr. Mo. I'm, I'm proud of her. Oh no, the lyrics will be... Did you mean to say fresh in my mind? I kind of like fish in my mind. The the fish in my mind at the moment is this song. It's going to be swimming around. <laughs> I love these glasses too. What what novelty glasses would I have? What why am I even asking? I would have heart glasses. My novelty sunglasses would be hearts. Look, they're getting ice cream. Ice cream with Tanya. There. What does that even say? It says something club. S club. It'd be so nice if they make a short film together. Story Club, it could be Story Club. I love this, they're showing the dress, the, the dress reveal, it's just the, <laughs> the wedding dress shopping, and they're, they're all there for it. Something that would have felt impossible before, I love it. Too much spice, have a drink. <laughs> oh, did Olive make this? They've got the apron on. Yeah, I think Olive made that as well. It's probably at the diner. I I love this. Oh, no. oh wait! Caprice is talking about the egg incident. I hope on Caprice's route we get to learn about the, the egg incident. That's that's what I want to know about. I want to know the egg incident. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and we need a June bug. Also, I've got to say as well, I love that Olive's bracelets, it's like, there's like the one bracelet for Millie and the one bracelet for Caprice. It's one for each of them. I really love that. I only noticed that on my, my second watch through now. But that is so sweet. 
That's so sweet. Ah, hello. Imagine like that there. That's that's me going ah. <laughs> We did it! I'm, I'm gonna skip through the wedding, as wonderful as it is. But I really love that, the, the little touch there with the, the bracelets. Yes, I know, I unlocked that. Right. That took so much longer than I thought it would because we ended up chatting a lot. <laughs> but I'm really glad we got to chat. I really enjoyed the chatting. But now, we have completed the Millie route. It's time for Caprice's turn. Right, I, I want to get people's opinion on this. For going through this, would anyone like me to play through the prologue again? Or should I just skip until like the new scenes if I pick the Caprice options? I think skipping through makes the most sense because if, if you want to know those those parts of the prologue, you can check the, 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 the first box, I guess. But I don't know if it would be better to like do it all for, I don't know. Skipping through makes sense. Yeah, I think, I, I think what I'll do is I'll skip through. I'm going to go in and click new game, even though I made all of the save files for the prologue, because I can just skip. No, I don't want to quit. I want to back. <laughs> Wrong one. I keep going to click X to close the menu. <laughs> but I'm going to click new game. And then we're going to skip. And then every time there is a choice in the prologue, I'm going to pick the one I didn't pick last time. <laughs> new game. It's Caprice time! It's time for the Caprice route. I'm so ready. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I've been really excited for this since playing First Snow because First Snow gives such a lovely, lovely backstory to the art club. And I can't wait to expand that. Sorry, I needed to close that. <laughs> Hi, Darren. Look, we're, they're all here. <laughs> the gang's all here. Oh, I'm, just, uh, I'm so excited to see Allison and Eileen again as well. I'm... Just, and Wallace. I love how short Allison is. She's so cute. Right, here we go. Last time we stayed put. Therefore, this time, we're going to offer to help. It should only take a few minutes. We got to help Caprice, right? We help. Caprice. I second guess myself for a moment, but eventually pull myself up out of my seat. Millie doesn't say anything, but the frown on her face says more than enough. Like you said, it'll just be a few minutes. Win-win, right? Yeah. She responds with a faint nod and even fainter smile, pushing her disappointment as far to the back of her mind as possible as she turns her attention to Darren. It hurts my heart so much more doing this. Now that I know the state of the writing club, it it makes it harder. <laughs> Maybe I should have done the art club first. No, I'm I'm glad I did the writing club. I wish it helped make me feel less guilty about things. As I approach the back of the room, Tanya takes notice and starts making her way from the group. As we pass each other, she gives me a couple taps on the shoulder. Hopefully they'll stay in line if they have a newbie to impress. Good luck. Oh yeah, Tanya kind of hates Caprice, huh? Haha. <laughs> and with that, she takes her spot next to Darren and Millie as I shuffle to the back cabinets. Howdy. Howdy. I love looking at this scene how wonderful all three of these are and comparing it in my mind to the Tanya Darren Heather collection we had for the writing club <laughs> meowdy Wallace uh hi a 
Open that cabinet there. We need any printer paper and glue you can get your hands on. The proper stuff, not sticks. About as warm of a welcome as I can expect. I love Eileen. I love Allison. I love Wallace. I do as she says, pulling the doors open to reveal a handful of office supplies. In contrast to the various fabrics and coloured paper they've amassed in a pile on the countertop. Thank you for the help, Olive. Even if they're small, setting up two tables for the club fair is a lot of work. Ooh, she's so sweet. I love Allison. Precious Bean. Precious Bean. I just want to put her in my pocket and run away. But I don't think Eileen would be happy if I did that. <laughs> it's fine. Two tables, though. Millie's sharing her space with us, so we're helping Aww. with the writing club setup, too. Fair's fair. Yeah. Caprice is quick to jump in, eager to not give Allison time to form a more generous response, surely. <laughs> the relationship between Caprice and Millie is so strange. It's like they're fluctuating on how friendly they are with each other on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence basis. Even their actions are inconsistent. I can't imagine why that would be. That is so strange, isn't it? It's so weird. It's almost like they hate each other, but they don't want to. Isn't that weird? Isn't that so strange? So, um... <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way, but why help us out here anyway? You came here for the writing club, right? She tries to make it sound like casual conversation, continuing to dig supplies out and adding them to the already rather large pile as she asks, but the tone of her voice betrays that pretty handily. Well, Caprice mentioned getting your club together when we met in class the other day. I figured this might be better than forcing all of you to go out of your way for me. Aww. Aww, see? They'd be a perfect fit. Oh. Allison's smile reinforces Caprice's statement and forces me further into the cabinet to hide my blush. Hello? Well, Hello. I'm glad you accepted my invitation because we've got things to discuss. Okay, no nonsense. We're... All right. Uh huh. Ready for discussions, ma'am? Yes. Uh, the... <laughs> That's definitely up there on the list of most intimidating ways to open a conversation. Allison was right. Caprice has told us a bunch about you already. Oh wow. Standard stuff. Flunking out, hoping to use the club as a lifeline. That makes them sound so bad. <laughs> That's okay. I, I think Eileen's just protective. I think this is this is Eileen being like, if you're just here to take advantage, then you can get out before you get in. And I love that from her. I, I love her for that. <laughs> I emerge from the cabinet, tossing a couple stacks of unopened printer paper onto their stockpile. Eileen's face remains unchanged as she continues sorting through her own mess. I hope she said more than that. <laughs> she has. Aww. She talked about you being nice and hardworking and being a good cook. Though I'm still not entirely sure where that last part came from yet. It, it comes from them being a good cook. <laughs> I shoot Caprice a glance, whose only response is a sheepish smile. Yeah, sure, great, but none of that is relevant to the point I'm trying to get to. You're only going to get out of us as much as you're willing to put in. Don't expect any handouts, at least not from me. God, I love her. I love her, she's so great. Everyone needs an Eileen friend, I feel. She gets things done, and she does not take anyone's crap. I love that. Right to the point, huh? I guess that's fair, as much as I doubt my ability to live up to the standards she seems to be expecting. When did you get so soft, Eileen? <laughs> that's her being soft. <laughs> what? That's soft? It is. Before, Eileen wouldn't have responded. I, I, I guess she's, she's eased up. The, the power of love. The power of Allison going, it's okay. It's okay to give people a try. 
don't know what you're talking about. Alison pauses her rummaging for a moment to pat Eileen's back a couple times. Eileen freezes upon the physical contact, but both resume their scavenging soon after. Eileen may be scary, but she's right. As long as you put in the effort, everyone here will be more than happy to help. Right, guys? Yeah, right, yeah. Sure. <laughs> he sounds so enthusiastic. Well, if I can, I suppose. I'm not really great at drawing and stuff myself. You are a ray of sunshine, and you're amazing, and I don't want you to put yourself down like that. Doing this route is going to be so different to Millie's, because I'm, I'm just here already. Like, I'm, I'm going to... I will protect these two with every iota of my being. I am, I am here to protect their smiles. I also want to protect Caprice's smile. I also like Wallace smiling, but I don't think I need to worry about Wallace. <laughs> it's gonna be so different. It's gonna be so different. I'm really, really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to read the other page of this twofold story. <laughs> also, Zarok, hello. Thank you for the posture check hydrate and also the dice. Let me have a big stretch. Ugh. And I'll have a sip of my drink. And let's see what you get on my d20. Let me... Ooh, sorry, that was a six. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a liar. It's a nine. Well, if, if you've got enough bonuses, I think you could get a decent roll. Um, <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Hanging in there. I'm doing fine at the moment. Uh, thankfully, the weather's cooled down in the UK, at least like where I live at the moment. But um, I recently got an AC unit, like, at the weekend, so I'm excited to set that up next time the weather's hot. Well, actually, I'm, I'm going to try and set it up tomorrow <laughs> so that I know it works when the weather is hot. But yes. Oh, because you're apparently not doing so great with a nine. It's okay, I'll use Bardic Inspiration. Let me... Hold on, what, what, what role is... Hold on. a d8 right yeah bardic inspiration is a d8 hold on depends on level of bard well i'm, I'm a level baby so we're going with the eight <laughs> where's my d8 oh i found it i found it let me let me give you a bonus I gave you a plus five, so you're up to a 14 now. <laughs> Congratulations. The role is improved. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. I'm just about to start the Caprice route. I've already kind of, in a way, started it in the prologue. And I am very, very excited. I love these characters. I'm just looking up at this lineup on the screen and I'm just like, where's my cursor gone? I love you. I love you. I love you. You're fine. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> no, I feel bad just saying fine for Wallace. I'm like... <laughs> I love Wallace too. I, f I feel like Wallace was the character that in First Snow, I, I, I didn't know what to make of him. I had such like a woobly vision of him in my mind. But he's great. He's he's doing his best, and he's a he's a really good friend to everybody. <laughs> Damn, so stone cold toward him. No, I I think he's great as well. He's so great, and it's really nice seeing what a nice friend he is to everyone as well. It's just that um, I need to protect the others. I need to protect everybody else. I don't need to protect Wallace. He he protects himself. <laughs> But no, I love this club. I love this club so much. I'm I wanna be in this club. I I oh I I wish I wish I could have like I wanna do something really silly. Also, Rika, hello! Thank you for throwing a dinosaur nugget at me. Thank you. <laughs> welcome, welcome, how's it going? 
Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I hope you're doing well. Oh, I say that like Eileen can't protect herself. No, that's true. Yeah, Eileen is also protection squad. But then when Eileen needs protecting, who, who does it? It's me. No, probably Wallace. <laughs> right as I said that out loud, I was like, no. It, that, Wallace. They, they don't need me. They don't really need me here, but I, I still want to protect them. Uh, oh, I hope I have a lovely day. Oh, I hope you can get some good sleep, Zarok. Thank you for the drive-by care package. Hopefully the, uh, the 14 is a good roll for sleep. <laughs> But thank you for stopping in. You came in here because you made dino nuggies and wanted to share with me. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I might actually have dinosaur nuggets for dinner tonight. Thinking about it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you thought of me. <laughs> That's the kind of association I want. I'm just here like, if anyone sees a can of monster in a shop and thinks of me, that's what I want. If anyone sees dinosaur nuggets and goes, oh, Liri, that's that's what I want. It's what I want to be remembered for. I don't care about the big brain puzzle moments. I don't care about being seen as intelligent. I don't care about being seen as kind. I don't care about being interesting. I just want people to see dinosaur nuggets and think of me. I feel very proud. <laughs> But I'm so glad. But yeah, it's Two Fold Tuesday. You can hang out while working. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the work, Luck. I appreciate it. I'm so excited to do Caprice's route. I'm I'm really, really excited. I I love this art club so much. Bam bam bam. Yeah. Yeah, I love that the yeah showed up in chat as the confetti played and it was was like a reaction to it. Thank you for the head pad too. Anyway, I'm, I'm wasting so much time today. No, actually, I'm not wasting it. I feel like time enjoyed is not wasted. It's not wasted time if I'm having a good time. But uh, I want to do something very quickly, which is like very silly. What would work best? I guess this one. I wonder what everyone's height is. Does does anyone know like the the canon heights of the twofold two folders? This is the kind of thing I should be doing after stream and not during stream, but I I had an idea and I want to do it now. And I'm silly. So I'm going to do it. I wonder if anyone can guess what I'm about to try and do. Yeah, I'm not wasting it. I'm spending it. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't think it's wasted time if I enjoyed spending that time. I <laughs> uh, Ruby Leanne, hello. All you know is Eileen is tall, pretty. Yes. Eileen is is the, the tall, attractive blonde. <laughs> True. That is that is who she is. <laughs> what? What you think? You think I would just add myself to the art club? You think I would just do that? You think that's the kind of thing that I would just do? <laughs> you think I would simply do such a thing? I'm I'm not buying time. What are you talking about? You think I would um, edit an image of myself and add an outline to make it look like I'm cut out on a sheet of paper to add myself into the the image as part of the club? You think that is a thing that I would potentially do? I wonder why you would think that. Um, I wonder. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm, uh, <laughs> There's nowhere for me to really fit here, but that's okay. 
あーパパパーアルダーのサイクル Why did I save this? I'm so silly I... I feel like I'd be like Oh, my head's a little big. I I I cropped I cropped it too, cropped it too low. I think. I need more leg. I need more leg. But I think I'd be like here, height wise. <laughs> Hold on, I can fix this. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> here <laughs> there we go <laughs> that's what this is where about I'd be I think I think I'd be like a similar height to Olive maybe a tiny bit shorter like there <laughs> e I am part of the art club too now And oh, that's such nice art. Thank you. My model artist, Addy, did it for me for my uh, my anniversary merch at the start of the year. There were two full body standees as part of the anniversary merch. And this was the art for one of them. And it's so pretty. It's so good. Hold on, let me do a little shout out. I love her art so much. I'm, I'm in the club too now. Hi. Hello. Hi. I, I, I fit here. Anyway, that's that's all I wanted to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> you did. You read me like a book. I I didn't really do a good job of hiding what I was planning on doing either way. I, I think I just outright said it pretty much. But yeah. Anyway. Here we go. Everyone's willing to help, right? Better than where I'm at, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Oh. Caprice shifts her eyes to Eileen to get her final confirmation. The silence hangs awkwardly for a few moments before Eileen pulls herself out of the cabinet and returns Caprice's glance. Like I said, if they can prove they actually want to put in the effort, I'll help. Yeah. But I'm not a charity case. If you're dragging them in, they're going to be your responsibility. I love that they're talking. Uh, Eileen is talking about Olive as though they're like a. A, a stray pet that Caprice has pulled in. <laughs> She's just here, like, well, yeah, yeah, you, you, you adopted them. It's your responsibility. <laughs> oh, come on! It'll be a team effort. Yeah. Uh huh. It's a relief to hear that everyone would be willing to help at least a little, but I wish these two weren't so willing to try pawning me off to each other when I'm standing right here. I'm capable of doing the work. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure the work I'm doing is good enough. Yeah, we, we know Olive's a very hard worker. That sounds more than fair. Here's hoping. Oh, I mean, to be fair, Caprice took one look at them and adopted them into her friend group. Yeah, the, Caprice tends to do that. She, she's she's good at adopting people, I think. She just spots someone and she's just like, "Hey, we're friends now. Also, you're in my club." <laughs> and then before you know it, it's true and everything is great. You really are playing softball today. A soft touch. Gentle Eileen, I love it. Eileen's grumbling from the cabinet signals the end of the conversation as the other club members resume their stockpiling efforts, Caprice opting to squeeze in next to me to double check my work. I'm thankful to work in relative quiet after being grilled from the get-go, but at least I left that conversation roughly knowing where I stand with all of them. I think. With everyone focused on the task at hand, the pile of loose supplies starts looking hefty enough for the club to consider their job done, closing up the various cabinets and drawers as they organize the hall. Sorry for dragging you along, Olive. Thanks for the help. See you at the fair, I hope? Yeah. One way or another, I guess. I haven't settled on anything yet. Yeah, I know. 
I'm positive you'll come around in the end, though. Oh, I, I love Caprice. We'll see. Oh, I love her. She's such a ray of sunshine. Right, I think this may be... Oh, no, this is, this is not shared text. After forcibly dragging Wallace back to help with the heavy lifting, the art club files out, Tanya eager to close the door behind them. Their absence is immediately noticeable, the air feeling just a bit less chaotic. That'd typically come as a relief, but the energy they carry as a group almost feels contagious. A thought that keeps coming to my mind as I resume my conversations with Millie until the end of the meeting. There's the end of the scene. Now we skip until the next option. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Right, last time we talked to Heather, we had a nice conversation with Heather. Maybe not nice, but a conversation. So this time we're going to talk to Alison, because anyone's a better option than Heather. <laughs> Also, Chizu, hello! Welcome, welcome! Happy time zone! How's Twofold Tuesday? I am having an incredible time. I've not gotten very far, but I'm having a great time doing it. But welcome, welcome! I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a, a good Tuesday so far. Let's talk to Alison! Oh, she's so sweet. A little smile. I love how Heather's turns into like a uh, face, and Alison's is just the cutest little ray of sunshine you would ever see in the world ever i i want to protect her it's allison time heather's only half paying attention to me to begin with so i quickly get up and skip over to allison as she strides off i have no intention of playing peacemaker but it's striking how strong her feelings on the matter are hey allison Little pout. Allison pouting. Ooh. I like that fierceness from her. Allison turns to me, her frustration with Heather still simmering. She soon turns embarrassed at being caught fuming. Yeah, that's that's the Allison I know. <laughs> uh hi. Sorry about Caprice running off. No worries. She seemed busy anyway. Fair prep? Yeah, we're all a bit behind schedule, so we've been kind of scrambling. Yeah. Oh, oi. Heather gives a dry <laughs> as she overhears the last of our conversation before wandering off toward the food counter. Yeah, go get food, go away. <laughs> She's always so rude. Yeah, get out of here. Allison pouts at her back as she walks away. Do you interact with the writing club much? Outside of yesterday, I mean. Every now and then. More lately with this fair stuff. Not like Heather is much of a club member, though. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly is the club fair about? I saw it advertised earlier last year, too. There's not much to it. A bunch of the school clubs set up in the gymnasium and try to recruit people. Mostly freshmen who haven't been poached yet. Millie offered to share her space, so we're sneaking in this year. I wonder if Millie actually did offer. Or it was more like Caprice being like, We're gonna share the table! Right? Yeah, we share the table. <laughs> Millie just like, uh, Okay, I'm sure. <laughs> if you have a way to get new people like that, why is Caprice so dead set on recruiting me? I think she just took a shine to them, honestly. Caprice is really serious about the club, but you've probably noticed that already. Honestly, she's serious about everything she does. Extremely. She wants to get every person possible. A dream of hers is to grow and expand the club beyond even the huge existing one, and... And... She trails off, suddenly going quiet as she thinks better of continuing. And what? To be honest with you, I prefer smaller groups. I'm fine with how things are. Me too. <laughs> Nothing against you, though. You're free to join if you want. You'd love it, I'm sure. 
Everyone really is nice, and we have a lot of fun. Oh, she's a sweetheart. She, she continues to be a sweetheart. Caprice is wonderful, too. I know she can be a little overbearing at times, but she always brings so much energy. A little too much, maybe. I like to call her passionate. She is extremely passionate. Sometimes, sure. I get it. When I first met her, I thought she was pretty overbearing. <laughs> I wouldn't really fault you for thinking that. Yeah, but remembering First Snow, Allison really did not have a choice. It was at a time when she was so new to everything and so, like, she... Allison is very much like the I don't want to rock the boat kind of person. She doesn't... She didn't know how to say no. But I'm glad she didn't say no, at least in this situation. And it definitely feels like she's a bit more confident now in the club, which is really nice to see. It's really nice to see the growth after First Snow. It's just a shame about all the rest of it. She's good at what she does, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Everyone there is. I'm still learning, but they're always teaching me new things. Yay. But I guess what's happening is... She taps her finger to her chin, pausing to give her next words some thought. Yeah, she's probably trying to figure out how much she can say. In a way that's, like, appropriate for this scenario. Caprice wants us to be a legitimate club. A club that's official, real, whichever word you want to use. We aren't much of one right now. We barely nudged our way into the fair. Even then, we kind of cheated to get there. Yeah. If I join... Will that even change anything? I don't know. It'd take more than one person, probably. I love the thought of Caprice just recruiting like 30 people and then rolling up to the administration like, Hey, I've got a club. Can we be official? Also, there's 30 of us already and we're fully established and we have a room. <laughs> it usually goes the other way around, I think. Of course it would. More members would be helpful, but I wonder how many they'd even gain from an event like this. Okay, but if, if Caprice is trying to convince people, then... She's pretty convincing. Then there's the fact that Allison here clearly doesn't want it. I wonder if I'd just be butting into some group of close friends more than joining a club. I mean, that's exactly... That's exactly the situation. It is just like a group of close friends. But they wouldn't be butting in. I think they would be befriending. <laughs> they would fit in so well in the art club as well. It kind of pains me to say it after the whole writing club path. But Olive really does feel like they would fit so well with the, the art club. All of the, the members of the art club. Feels like they would naturally fall in with this friendship crowd. <laughs> Hey, admin, give money. Why didn't it correct a big? That Caprice would say that. She'd say, uh, give money. Also, lots of it. Big money. Thank you. <laughs> also, hi, Jack. Welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Hello. I'm starting the Caprice route. I'm in the prologue. It took a while to uh, deal with Heather. <laughs> but I'm starting the second page in Twofold. I'm really excited. But welcome, welcome. Still, we're going to do our best. You should do what's best for you, too. So true. Thanks. Sorry for keeping you. I'll see you around. Allison gives a quick goodbye before skipping out to try and catch up with Caprice. What I found might not have been what I wanted to hear, but at least she was honest. I really like this because it's like the first encounter is the people in the club talking about what there is to gain from the club. And then these conversations, the one with Allison and the one with Heather before, are giving the more negative side of the club, the reason why Olive might not want to join. And I love that it gives both of those. It's 
it's really interesting because Heather's just like, yeah, just so you know, the club is falling apart and kind of terrible. And Allison here is like, well, it's not really a club. We're just kind of friends and I don't know what's going on. So it's important stuff for Olive to think about. <laughs> now, time to actually get some food. I quietly mull things over as I head to the food counter. The art club is close and friendly. They're small because it's like they're a group of friends trying to be a club. The writing club isn't much, but at least Millie seems capable and eager to help. It's probably better to not even consider Tanya and Heather as factors. <laughs> I'm... Hey, overprepared! Experience all optional choices in the prologue. I did it! We did it! I'm not sure if either is a good option. Hopefully this club fair will help me find better answers. Woohoo! Whoa, Rise of Raid happens! Hi! Hi, Pillow Fort! Welcome, welcome! How's it going? Come on in! Come on in, bring the pillows along. Put them on the ground, let's get comfy. Welcome, welcome! Thank you for the raid! I hope the code vein went well. I hope you had a fun stream. I... I know nothing about Code Vein except for the character creator. I I love the character creator for Code Vein. I've never played the game. <laughs> I hope you've been having fun with it. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. For anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK and I love comfy games and puzzle games and it's Twofold Tuesday and I'm just getting ready to start the Caprice route in Twofold after finishing Millie's route last week and wrapping up the loose ends and in the first two hours of this stream and finally starting the Caprice route, the art club and I am extremely excited. This game is amazing and I love it. Oh, it went better than last week. Oh, I'm glad. Finally done with Temu, <laughs> Temu Anor Lonto. <laughs> wow, that, that is... I love that I can just instantly visualize that and I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I'm glad it went better though. I hope you've been having fun with it. I really love how versatile the Code Vein creator is. It, it's so good. You can do so much with it. It's amazing. Uh, the only thing you know about Code Vein is that it's a God Eater spin-off. I, I didn't even know that. I, I, I don't know anything about God Eater either. <laughs> But I hope you had a good stream. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. If you have to go get some rest after your stream or get some food or drink, please don't feel like you have to stick around. But if you want to, we're having a comfy time. At least at, at the moment. It's it's comfy at the moment. It it will probably not stay that way for long, but I, I think people will be okay. I think it'll be good. Ah, it's obviously inspired by Anor Lando, but what if Labyrinth and what if Lost? Oh. And what if... No. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like hell to me. I'm glad you got through it. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good stream, though. Time for me to continue with Caprice time. Is this a new... No, this is a skippable. I can skip this. It's almost time to make a decision. Ah! I say make a decision, it's the art club. We've done the writing club, it's the art club. That is the decision. But here we go, look! There's the creative writing club. The Heather and the Tanya and the Darren. And Caprice's art club with Wallace and Eileen and Allison. I'm, I'm really excited for this, I'm so excited. Are we ready? I'm ready. Oh, I think because I still had the skip on, it skipped the voice line. Let me go back and redo that. Oh, the wait, yeah, the, the sad face from the other when you mouse over it is... Mouse over Millie's and Caprice looks sad. Mouse over Millie's and... Uh, mouse over Caprice's and Millie looks sad. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Millie. Art Club. For better or worse, I'm going with the art club. 
here we go. We've gone through red, now we go through blue. And I have the the Ultra Fiesta monster to go with it, the, the bluest can I have. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited. Love how my mouse circled Allison when I said I was excited. I'm just excited about all of them. It was meant to be a bigger circle. It just <laughs> I'm I'm I I'm I really can't wait to see how this goes. I'm I don't know what it's going to be like. Like Millie's side of things had so much about grief. I don't know what Caprice's side is going to be like. I, d I don't know how this is going to go and I can't wait. Yes! I knew you'd make the right choice. Join the art club, all caps, exclamation point. Join the art club for better or worse. I hope not worse. Oh. Don't pout, I'm sorry. She pumps her fists, jumping up and down. Millie frowns with either annoyance at Caprice or disappointment at me. Probably both. She quickly corrects into a pleasant smile, though. Well, Olive, thank you for at least considering us. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, you're not the only prospective member in this gym. I hope you have a wonderful time with your new club. She didn't sound very genuine saying that. But it's okay. I understand. Thank you. Good luck. It's very stilted. Oh. Wonderful won't even begin to describe it! Oh, and now, here we go. She reaches out and grabs my hand. Thank you! Oh. You're welcome. Her hands firmly grasping mine, she shakes my arm without rhyme or reason, expelling as much energy as she's physically capable. I don't want to admit how much it hurts. <laughs> I'm counting on you. Don't worry. It won't just be me. The entire club has your oh. back. We'll get you there. Trust us. It's so sweet of her as well, though, because she's going into this with such enthusiasm. Like, she genuinely wants to help here. She's she's just like, yeah, we will help you. You will be helped. It's going to be fine. We can fix this. I can't fix things in my own home life, but I can't fix this. I'm... I love you, Caprice. It's easy to get wrapped up in Caprice's energy. All I can do is hope that she's able to live up to that enthusiasm once we get into the actual studying. So long as she and the club are willing, I want to hope it'll be okay, even if I have to force myself to believe it. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. I don't know enough to know for sure, but all I can do is place my blind faith in them. It'll be okay. It has to be. That evening. And so, to our newest member, Olive! We getting pizza! Yeah! Give me pizza! P-I-Z-Z-A. Caprice stands at the end of the table, raising her glass full of soda. Fortunately for the rest of us, her volume is just passable as an indoor voice. Unfortunately, she stands with such a gusto that the combined effort of her voice and movement draws the attention of almost every other table in the vicinity anyway. Content with playing along, the rest of the art club half-heartedly raise their own glasses to match her, albeit with greatly diminished enthusiasm. <laughs> It's okay, she has enough enthusiasm for all of them, combined. <laughs> can we get olives on the pizza? Um, you can if you want. <laughs> you can have olives. Unless you just meant this olive. In which case, I don't think she'll want to be on the pizza. 
trying to think through the logistics of this way too much in my head. I'm just like imagining a pizza on the floor now and Olive standing on top of it. Like, you wanted Olive on your pizza. Hi, that's, that's terrible. It's a terrible joke. Horrendous joke. I'm so sorry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the urge to shrink away into my vest grows by the second, and I only barely manage to resist it. Still, though, I can't help but sink into my chair just a little. Caprice is quick to notice, eyes quickly meeting mine, her smile as wide as it's been all night. Come on, you too! Frost! I feel the eyes of every single person around land on me. I give her a non-committal hand wave, but she just raises her glass even higher. She sure doesn't want to drop it. Yeah, this this is like the biggest nightmare scenario for me. I would hate this. I would hate this so much. Whenever I'm out in public, I make it my challenge to be as unnoticeable as possible. <laughs> In an act of surrender, I hold up my cup as well. Welcome to the club! The rest of the club is less enthusiastic in their following welcomes. Allison and Wallace opt a quiet murmur of agreement, obviously feeling the attention from around us as well. Eileen's response is a simple grumble. <laughs> Cheers! Hold on, can I, can I clink my monster can against anything? Cheers. I just clinked it against an empty can. That was not a satisfying sound. Hold on, how about... Cheers. There we go. <laughs> Satisfied with the response regardless, Caprice extends her glass and takes a drink, ending her impromptu toast. Pizza again, huh? This might be the only place she knows. <laughs> it's tradition! We gotta do this every time someone uh, new joins the ranks. It's become a tradition. Wait, no, that's really cute, actually. <laughs> because it, it happened before with the others joining the club. I, I love the thought of just, yeah, pizza tradition. Someone new. We get pizza. It feels like if it wasn't attached to her face, Eileen's eyebrow would be leaving Earth's atmosphere. Another tradition? I wonder how many traditions Caprice has tried to make. I wonder how many are actually going to stick as traditions. <laughs> if we keep adding more, we'll be eating pizza more days than not. Oh, is the tradition pizza for everything? Never mind. I thought it was going to be like different traditions. I think it's just a tradition of thing happens, we get pizza. Honestly, fair. Is that a problem? <laughs> hmm. Oh, so I'm just an excuse for a party. Something tugs at the back of my mind, but I shake it off for now. An excess of celebrations isn't that big of a deal, assuming we will uh, we still get study groups together. Is the art club a study group kind of group? Mm. Now that Olive has decided to join our club, we're up to five members. Woo! And how many did that other club recruit? Zero? Caprice, stop it. Stop it. I have a theory. You know how there's so much rivalry between the clubs? I have a theory that Caprice is playing up the rivalry aspect because she doesn't know how to deal with Millie not getting along with her. So she's like really like building up the rival angle to make it friendly between them. Like, I, I think it's a situation where like Millie's backing away, Caprice is worried about losing the friendship, and she's like, well, if Millie doesn't get along with me, let's make it a friendly not get along. Let's be rivals. Let's have a rivalry. And she's like really like going hard on that. I think, I think that's the situation here. <laughs> oh, almost left OBS running live again. Last time you did that, you streamed for almost 48 hours of goodbye screen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you remembered. See, I've, I've got like a full routine when I finish my stream. So I, 
there's only one time recently where I forgot to end the stream and it was only for like a couple of minutes. But I'm 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 pretty lucky in that regard. I have like my little routine of like send raid, figure stuff, end stream, do more stuff. Got a little list. But yeah, that's that's my theory with Caprice. I think the reason why she's playing at the rivalry so much is because of how tense the relationship is with Millie. And she's trying to turn that into something friendly. It's like, well, we're not being friends at the moment because you're pushing me away. But we can be rivals, but we can be friendly rivals. So I'm going to go really hard rival rival time. Big rivals. It feels like the kind of thing Caprice would do. Caprice. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wish only the best for them. I know she does. I know she does. I wish I could believe her, but the grin on her face tells a different story. From the moment we've left the fair, she's been beaming with a kind of competitive sparkle only seen in athletes. I can't help but feel a bit weird about it. I do need the help, and I'm trusting her to be my best bet. Still, at the end of everything, I'm just a pawn Caprice is trying to keep on the field. Maybe at the moment. Ba 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 ba. Oh, okay. BRB, run to bathroom. <laughs> ba ba ba. Yeah, that, that's understandable. I, I have my list of things I do in order. It's like uh, set up raid, go to ending screen, send raid, post raid message, say hi, end my stream, make the thank you tweet whilst lurking in the stream I raided either continue lurking or say I have to go. Update the thumbnail while I'm lurking. That's, I, I have quite a lot of stuff I do actually. <laughs> it's a longer list because then I like start the upload for the YouTube video, then I usually go get dinner and also feed Tiffany. It's, it's a little routine now. Yeah, I'll, knowing Caprice, you're not just a pawn she's trying to keep on the field. You're a friend she's trying to keep on the field. Right. Like, Caprice, I don't, I don't think she'd be able to treat someone as a pawn. She genuinely cares. Like, she's not just going to be like, okay, we'll help you get through the year and then goodbye. She's going to be like, well, we helped you get through the year, so we're really good friends now, right? Right? She's not that kind of person. She, she can't. I don't think she could be that detached. She's just like a generally friendly person and I love her. Well, it was basically the flip of a coin. <laughs> it literally was. Remember when I did my poll for which club to do first and it was a draw and I had to roll a die? It, it literally was a flip of a coin. <laughs> and now we're on the other side of the coin, two sides. Twofold. Tuesday. So you say, but I'm sure you've had your reasons. For example, it's clear we were the fun choice. Probably the most fun at the whole fair. Yeah. There are a lot of reasons, but I can't say that was one of them. It was mostly for the study help. I don't intend on becoming your personal tutor. Don't worry, they don't expect you to. I didn't really plan on that. Then you made the wrong choice. Caprice has been running us ragged since classes started back up last January. Oh? Okay, the assuming we will still get study groups caveat hasn't gotten off to a great start. Eileen takes a small sip of her beer before continuing her thought. I chance a peek at Caprice who's suddenly gone quiet, even caught. She's struggling with a particularly large piece of pizza, trying to catch all the cheese before it slides off. Eileen continues to seize the moment. Hey, Caprice, you know what the problem is here? You just have to talk to Google AI. If the cheese is sliding off your pizza, you just have to use glue. Anyway. The ratio of asinine field trips we've been taking to actual studying is heavily not in your favor. Uh. It's Allison's turn for a death stare, this time focused on Eileen. 
Surprisingly, Eileen's posture shifts and her face softens just enough to be noticed. <laughs> Girlfriend power. Love softening beam, activate. Capri should be the one to handle the bulk of it since she roped you into this. Yep, that's fair. As long as I can pass the semester, I don't really care how. <laughs> the power of pout. I love this face. It's This is the face. She's just a little teddy bear. It's like she is trying to be fierce and she just looks adorable. I want to pinch her cheeks. It's <laughs> I love Alison. Oh, I, I have such a soft spot for Alison and Eileen. I really love these two so much. I, I love them. My eyes shift downward, feigning, feigning interest in the slice on my plate as a smoke screen to think things over. I've said I don't care, but so far, this get-together has me feeling more nervous than I'd expected. This vague offers of help here and there, but it's hard to imagine how much of that is genuine versus how easily Capri seems to wrap others into her excitement. Yeah, that's a very fair observation. And that brings me back to the head honcho herself. The more I sit here and listen to current affairs, the more I worry that perhaps I made this decision because I got wrapped up in her energy too. Like Eileen said, I'm here because of Caprice. It's too late to walk back that decision, so I have to trust her. Freed of her pizza, Caprice finishes all of her soda in one go and pipes back up. None of that is important right now. We're celebrating! This is the beginning of a new year! Woo! It's already fall. Caprice grumbles in protest at Wallace's remark as she takes the hat from her head and wrings it out as if it were a, a wet rag, taking a moment to gather her thoughts. Yeah, take the hat off to let the brain cells breathe a bit. Sorry, one second. I want to do something very silly. Just one second. Sorry, th this really has been a stream of me just like giving in to all of my intrusive thoughts. Like I have a thought of I what what would happen if I did this and I do it. No, where is it? Hold on, this isn't what I was thinking of doing, but I'm gonna do it. This isn't, this wasn't my plan. It's funnier. <laughs> I was like, what if I give Caprice a hat? I was gonna give her the, the lesbian hat that I have as an asset. I like this one. I think this suits her, I like this look. Good luck. Actually, no, it's... No, if I'm being honest, Eileen would be the one with this hat. She, I, I can't lie. Eileen would have this hat. That's an Eileen hat. Hold on. Can I find the hat I was looking for? Oh, I need to make an asset of my hat. My beret from my chibi model. What other hats do I have? <gasps> Hold on. No, I have a better I have a better hat. I have a better hat for Eileen. I haven't found the hat I wanted for Caprice. I found a better one for Eileen. I, oh no, that's that's more of like a cute hat, actually. That's a... Allison hat. Bleh. I'm giving them all hats. They all get hats now. This chibi... Wait, my chibi didn't work! Hold on, why didn't my chibi work? Hold on a second. Why did that not work? Let me let me check my commands. It should have worked. Oh! There we go! <laughs> now it worked! Yeah, this chibi model! Because I've got the berry. 
with this outfit. I, I need to make an asset for the berry so I can put my hat on other people. <laughs> Thank you for the chibi redeem. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why that didn't work. That's so strange. Is it because I was playing around with hats at the same time? Did I confuse everything? <laughs> I think I may have confused it. Oh, I found another hat. Again, not the hat I was looking for, but I think it would suit Wallace beautifully. Therefore... There we go, perfect. And now the hat I actually want is going to be the last one I find. I found it! Ta da! <laughs> New hats! I don't have a hat for Olive though, hold on. Hold on, do I have any other hat here that isn't a Santa hat? I know I have a Santa hat. I don't want a Santa hat. Hold on, actually. Oh, oh my goodness, I just saw something and I've lost it. Where did it go? I saw the perfect. Okay, found it. Okay, found it. Hold on. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's um. There we go. <laughs> I wonder what Olive would actually. I actually, this hat suits Olive quite well. Olive can have this hat. Allison can have this hat. We've done it. We've given them all the perfect hats. Hat squad. Look at all these hats. <laughs> I love... I, I... Why did I do this? I'm so glad people put up with me. I also love that I'm doing this and all there is is like the gentle chatter of the pizza place. There's no music or anything. It's just a crowd. Oh, that's, that's like faint music actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ASMR of the pizza parlor really rounds this up. It really does. Oh, it's great. Anyway, let's let's get back to actually playing the game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I have a single brain cell. And it fixated on hats. <laughs> Just little ADHD moments. Anyway. Taking a moment to gather her thoughts. We also took a moment to gather our... No, we, we took a moment to gather our hats. Never mind. After the last imaginary drop is wrung out of the poor thing, she places it atop her head once more and her face lights up. So here's the agenda going forward. Okay, okay, plan. Caprice with a plan. I'm ready. We'll draw, create, and make more than ever before! And since Olive is just entering the world of art, we'll have to cultivate in them a love for it. Okay. She looks at me and nods proudly, beaming. I feel the urge to remind her I'm looking more for study help than my own artistic awakening, but think better of it for now. Her eyes sweep across the rest of the table. Oh, how's the AC working out for me? I haven't set it up yet, but thankfully the temperature's fine here at the moment. But I'm hoping tomorrow I'll get the chance. Tomorrow's gonna be like a big organizing a whole bunch of stuff in my life kind of day, so. <laughs> AC is on that list. But just owning it makes me feel powerful. Oh, don't worry, the chat loves that single brain cell. Yes, I saved the others for Talos. All of the other brain cells are just waiting for Sunday to solve puzzles. <laughs> I don't need them the rest of the time. We've got Caprice's exuberant energy. She looks at me and nods proudly, beaming. I feel the urge to remind her I'm looking more for study help than my own artistic awakening, but think better of it for now. Her eyes sweep across the rest of the table. In the past year or so, We've only expanded more and more! Yeah? It started with one, me. And then soon there were three of us! Yeah! Allie! 
Yes? Allison sits up straight, startled. With this club, you found a new love. <laughs> this is so cute. Rare loves. I love these little chippies. Wait, this is adorable. Yep, that was, was definitely through the club, Caprice. You are so right. Yes, definitely. Allison looks red and nervous, eyes darting around the room. She briefly looks to Eileen for encouragement, who responds with a simple shrug. Of... of the arts, you mean? Yes, exactly! Ah! <sighs> Whew! Beyond anything, the strongest power art has is to connect people. So true. Where stuffy old words aren't enough, you can always count on the visual medium to bring everyone together. <laughs> ah, yes. She looks to Eileen for encouragement. Uh, love? Uh, art. Yes? Speaking of which... These chibis are adorable. I love this. Speaking of which... She starts moving her pointer finger from Allison to Eileen, who looks unperturbed. Allison slumps in her seat, relieved the attention is off her. I guess she hates to be the focus even more than I do. Not another word. <laughs> Slam. Caprice's finger glides past Eileen and lands on Wallace in a motion so clean you wouldn't think it was a last second course correct. These two really know how to navigate each other well, even if they're like oil and water. And not to mention Wallace. You see? This club makes artists! Yeah? Eileen and I were artists long <laughs> before you dragged us in here. I love this. Just, yeah, kidnapping. Kidnapping from him from the writing club. I wonder why he did join. Because he does, he is really good friends with Millie, so it is a little surprising to see him in the art club. But then again, he's he's really, really close with Eileen as well. It's very possible it was like an Eileen being like, Wallace, you have to join this club. I cannot take it on my own. <laughs> Details! That's fine. Point B. The club is more than capable of molding someone into an artist, and that's exactly what it's gonna do! Excellent. I'm ready. I'm so ready. The writing club turned me into a writer. I'm ready to become an artist. I'm ready. That's you, by the way. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, I feel <laughs> like we're getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> this is so cute. I love this. Oh, this is so great. This is so good. Also, Grace, no, hello. Welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. So the plan is simple. Create. Everything else will come naturally. Okay. Sounds like a terrible way to pass the year for studying. Thanks. Caprice stands with her hands on her hips, seemingly done, and very pleased with her speech. It takes a minute for anyone to react. <laughs> I love the stunned silence. I would also be part of that stunned silence. So basically her plan is that there isn't a plan. Oh. Okay, it still changed me back at least. It still remembered to to bring me back after the chibi thing, even though it didn't work. So that's good. But thank you for the chibi redeem. <laughs> but yes, the best plan of there isn't one. It's my least favorite kind of plan. <laughs> but uh, welcome, welcome. Late for Twofold Tuesday. It's okay. It's been a very slow Twofold Tuesday. I've not progressed very far in the game, but we've been having a great time. So it's okay. <laughs> But I'm so excited to be starting Caprice's path. I'm so excited for art club times. I, I love the art club. I love the art club. I'm th I grab them with my hands. I up. Oh. It just changed me back to me again. Okay, so half the chibi thing worked. <laughs> That's so funny. 
Anyway, yes, I'm still me. But yeah, I really love the art club. I'm, I'm really excited for this one just because I love all of the members way more than Millie's. Like, Millie's was great and I love Darren. I will protect Darren with my life. But Heather is Heather. And Tanya as well is... Tanya's the kind of person I was talking about earlier where I was like, there is nothing wrong with Tanya and she seems lovely. She seems great. I'm sure she's a great friend, but I don't think I would be friends with her. <laughs> I don't think she's the kind of person I would get along well with, but I also wouldn't not get along with her, if that makes sense. Where is this slot? I'm just, I'm just like, I, I'm gonna like, parasocially force myself into this friendship group. I love them. I love them. <laughs> I'll go up to Caprice and be like, please recruit me. I want to join. <laughs> Is that all? Hmm? Sounds fine to me. The sudden <laughs> shift to dramatics made me worried something drastic was about to happen. Like what? I believe in freedom of expression, but as usual, I'll be directing meetings to help inspire you. So, no studying? Inspiration can come from anywhere, and when it strikes, you have to capitalize! Yeah? I wonder how many of these inspirational lines came from the internet, and how many she's trying to churn out on the spot. That sounds good and all, but how will it help me pass her actual art class? Yeah. That's what needs to be asked here. Oh, Olive. She gives me such a sad, pitiful look, like I've just asked how to boil water. To understand art, truly understand it, you have to experience it. Be immersed in it. There's no better way to do that than to be surrounded by it all the time. Not filling me with confidence. But do you guys, like actually study of course they don't <laughs> you know it's like as as stern as eileen is i get the impression that eileen would be the type to step in once she sees that olive is like actively trying to study and just be like uh oh, you're hopeless let me help let me do it let me do it for you <laughs> Seemingly trying to help the conversation, Allison raises her hand meekly to join in. I took that class last semester. A big part of the finals is about exploring the fundamentals in your own way. Ah, that's that's good to know. This is this is good knowledge. A little more hopeful. What? Like actual art? So what's the textbook even for? So you have to pay to buy or rent it. It'll be fun. You'll see. What's going to be your focus, Ali? I was thinking of trying to get into sculpting or something this semester. Yes! Oh my goodness. Oh, I like the sound of that! Branching out is important! And I am just... I am just irreparably, hopelessly loving Allison and Eileen. Because my first thought when she said sculpting is like, imagining like a potter's wheel. And her, like, making a vase on a potter's wheel, and then Eileen approaching ghost style, and... <laughs> <laughs> Little pottery moment. Anyway. Caprice emphasized drawing so much coming into this, I hadn't really considered that this club bothers with other art forms. But then, the fine arts club at our school, which I didn't even have a chance to consider joining instead of this one, probably covers just about every form of art there is. Thank you for the head fat. <laughs> I've been trying some new brushes. Oh. Wallace holds his phone up to show Eileen the screen. Allison curiously leans in to take a look too. I can't see it from my angle, but trying to get closer to steal a look doesn't feel right with how new I am to this circle. A little awkward maybe. I'm thinking Wallace is a digital artist. I think did did it did did he mention like graphic design in First Snow? I think he'd be going down the digital art 
path. I think he's talking about digital brushes. Huh, not bad. They may still be physical brushes, though. I, I could be completely wrong. But man, a tablet just doesn't no, feel I the same right. as the real thing. Yes, I was correct. I fully... Yes. Knew it. Knew it. I'm sure you'd be great once you got used to it. I don't think she wants to get used to it. <laughs> I'm sure you would. As for me, I don't think I could ever go traditional. No undo. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I love this. And it's so interesting too, as well, because I I do have a drawing tablet. I, I do like to dabble in art from time to time. Not so much recently, because I haven't really had the time for it, but I do like drawing. I really like drawing. But I find it so much easier to do it digitally with my tablet than having like pen and paper. I don't know what it is. Like even with pen and paper, like I have a pencil, I have a, an eraser, I can like rub out lines, it's not a problem. But I find it so much easier on a tablet. I really like my tablet. <laughs> That's why we practice. Yeah? I'll just stick to digital, thanks. Eileen the traditionalist, Wallace the digital artist, and Allison the experimentalist. And Caprice. Regardless of everything else, I could have done a lot worse than this variety if I was looking for help. As for Caprice... What does Caprice do? I think everything. <laughs> I've seen some quick sketches of hers in class, but I'd like to assume there's more to her than that. I guess it won't hurt to ask. Hey, what kind of art do you do? All of it? She gives me a mischievous smile. Oh, are you curious? But yes, that's why they're asking. Not for long. <laughs> she playfully taps my arm. Oh, don't be like that. I made the posters and flyers for our club, of course. You saw some of my best work at the fair. It's very striking. Are those her best examples? The posters were eye-catching, but they felt like technique had been swapped out with raw energy while creating them. Yeah. I, I think it was. I guess that's suitably on brand, but I'm not sure if pure energy and willpower are enough to help me brute force the actual technical know-how needed for a passing grade. <sighs> Oddly though, those worries leave me briefly when taking in the pride and excitement she has when talking about them. I can show you more during the next club meeting if you want. Yeah. Sure. But only if you have something to show me in return. Ah. I haven't even started yet, and she's already giving me homework. The thought alone of going home tonight and drawing something as simple as a straight line to present embarrasses me senseless. Nevertheless... I'll... try. I believe... I believe in them. I believe... Hey, look at this! Act 1, work in progress. Yay! And we're moving on to two weeks later. Boom, boom, boom. Right, what time is it? Let me do a little save. I realize it's taken me a while to get to this point. I I got very distracted finishing the, the Heather situation. But we did it. We did it. We got through the prologue. We did all of the options. We figured out Heather's deal. We've joined the art club. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna save it here, go back to the main menu. And I think that is a good point to leave it at. I I did expect to do a little bit more of Caprice's roots this week. I, I didn't expect myself to get distracted for two hours with Heather. But it, I'm, I had a really nice time though. So I'm, I'm still glad I did. It's <laughs> It's always such a, like, a double-sided thing. Like, haha, <laughs> twofold, hee <laughs> hee. Like, I, I always feel a little bit bad when I, when I go off on such tangents that it takes me forever to get through things. 
but I also the tangent times and the chatting is so nice. It's always so nice talking to people. I embrace it. I embrace it. And also, like, with me uploading the VODs too, at least on, when they're on YouTube, you can just, like, scrub through. You can see the previews <laughs> and skip past the talking if you don't like that to get to the, the game. But yeah, this has been so nice, though. I just, I, I love this game. I love this game so much. Also, I love that emote, too, holding the flower. We got the flower here from doing Millie's room. I wonder what we'll get when we do Caprices. Because we've got the little cactus here for for Olive. We've got the the flower here for Millie. What type of flower is it? Is it a carnation? Maybe? The Millie flower. For Caprice? I'm, I've, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling sunflower. Caprice kind of gives me sunflower vibes. Or maybe not even a flower. Maybe it'll be a little otter. A little otter plushie. I don't know. I'm excited to find out in the future. <laughs> but, uh, welcome back, Kiroboros! I just saved to, to finish for this week. <laughs> it's, it's a little early. I'd usually go on a little bit longer, but I, I feel like after the title card, feels like a really good point to, to start at next week. To be like, right, act one, Caprice, we're going. We're doing it. And I won't spend half an hour talking about air conditioning and how, how heat insulated the UK houses are. <laughs> uh, hold on, I wanna go here. Like, there's only two songs that we haven't unlocked so far. So they're going to be things unlocked in Caprice's path. I want to go through the music very quickly, too. Ups and downs. It's a very ups and downs feel. I love that. Oh, yeah, glad you got to see the end, too. And thank you so much for the 60 bits as well. Thank you. Thank you. I will... I'll put them in a little pile and look after them. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Glass half full. Very quiet. Creative conflict? Oh yeah, this is the conflict song. Oh, you can immediately hear it. As soon as the song starts. This is the, oh god, things are bad kind of song. Cute salute? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the club. What is watercolors? Oh, I like this one. I mean, I like all of them. I like this one. Out and about. <laughs> this is such a jolly one. Tuning out the world. Yeah. Yeah, me too, Haley. Consider the competition. I love that this is an upbeat one, but it's still got that like underlying tension to go with it as well. Boo, boo, boo. Hello, you have good news and Huh? Oh, is there a remake for a mecha anime? Oh, cool. I hope it's good. But welcome in, Doctor Anime. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling better than the other day. Welcome on in. I was just going through the, the music and the extras. The less bad option. <laughs> Boundless worlds. Yeah, I, I love that I can just like feel the the mood of all of these as well. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Oh, and half 
happiness and in sorrow. Oh, it does have the... Oh. It feels to it. And then there's chasing footsteps with and without vocals. I love that there's the two options. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this song. It's so pretty. It's such a soft, gentle song. I love this. It's so nice. It feels like it's been a while since I've seen us really smile. Uh, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm putting this on. I'm putting Before We're Home on. This song makes me. This feel. This just feels like a good time. But yay! Back. But yeah, I think that is a, a good start. So I stop, stop to, stop to point it at. A good point to stop it at. <laughs> and ready for next week. That means twofold Tuesday next week. We'll be jumping straight in at the start of Caprice Act One, and I'm very excited. I'm so excited. I'm really interested as to how it's going to go in general. Because, like, there's the obvious crossover with the conflict between Caprice and Millie, which is going to be an aspect of both. But I'm really, really interested to see Caprice's side of all this. Especially knowing now everything that I know about Millie, it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes. But yes, I'm, I love this game. I love this game so much. There's another one for the compilation. <laughs> But yes, with that, I shall bloop. I managed to bloop this time. I'm so happy. I fixed it. <laughs> but uh, with that, I shall wind up the stream so that I can go and get some dinner and wash my hair and maybe start looking at the AC and trying to figure out how to set it up. <laughs> Things to do so much to do. The main reason why I'm not streaming tomorrow is purely because I need to take a day to try and sort out everything. Everything in my life at the moment. There's a lot of stuff that I've been putting off because I don't have time for it. So when I was making the schedule for the week, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the karaoke on Saturday. I'm going to make that time on Wednesday. The whole day tomorrow. I'm, I'm making the time to actually do all the things I've been putting off. <laughs> so I'm also going to be taking photos too. I've got so many nice things to take photos of. I have to take photos of my own anniversary merch. I haven't done that yet. I have to take photos of my Studio Elan merch. I have to take photos of my Without a Voice collected, like Kickstarter merch. So many things I've been putting off. So that's my, my Wednesday challenge to myself. And I'm going to accomplish it. Manifesting. I'm saying it here, so I have to. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. I really love Two Fault Tuesdays. It makes me happy. But yes, let's see who is around to send a raid on to. Have a little look. There's, there's quite a few people on who I like to raid. Who shall I raid? Who do I want to raid? Hmm. Oh, part of me wants to raid Aiko. Aiko-san, Aiko Kitsune. Aiko's an Arctic Fox Japanese VTuber. But she's already been streaming for like five and a half hours. I don't know if she's going to be streaming much longer. It's really late in Japan at the moment. But I never get to raid her, and she raids me a lot, and she's so sweet. She's so lovely. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna do it. Hold on. We're gonna be fast to make sure she doesn't end the stream. Because <laughs> I never get to raid her. Right, so what I'm gonna do is... Here is the raid message. If you're subbed, we will use Comfy. If not, we will send hearts. 
And I'm going to send you over to the lovely Aiko Gitsune. Please send her lots of love from me. She's very sweet. Uh, currently playing a game called Abiotic Factor? It looks... I don't know what kind of game this is. It looks interesting. But uh, I'm going to send you over Aiko's way. Bum 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 bum. Get that raid set up. But uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. Thank you for, for chatting with me about air conditioning. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've wanted an air conditioning unit for so long. So the fact that I actually own one now, is it's very nice. It makes me very happy. But for now, I must rest and eat food and wash my hair. But yes, it's been a lovely stream, though. It's been so nice. I'll be back again on Friday for some more Divinity with Xander. I might be doing stuff Thursday. I'm not sure yet. Still got stuff to think about. There may be stuff off schedule. I will be message. I'll I'll post in Discord and on Twitter if plans do change. So keep an eye out. But if not, I'll be back on Friday for some more Divinity Original Sin with Xander, which I'm very much looking forward to. And for now, I should feed myself and my cat. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.